That's an eternity of basketball ahead of us. Another beautiful steal perpetrated by Todd White. The action continues. The let go situation here. Alex A. Deacon going up against a double team. Jeffrey Moore has access to the bucket. Watch yourself on that normal replay of that last bit of action was Juan Fernandez actually wanting to be up here against Master Jaworski. We're crossing the twilight zone. That's an eternity of basketball ahead of us. Welcome to an eternity of basketball, and thanks to all of you. Um, our episode from last week has now risen to the top as our most trending episode. Oh, JB it. Gayoso is now at number one. Imagine Jeff the weekend, Jali Escobar from just a few weeks ago is at number two, all the way down to Nilo Cruz at number ten. So there's some changes in our top ten trending episodes. Thanks to all of you. Which one is your favorite? Keep watching us on YouTube. Next up, the Globally Balling Network, their original articles, audio and video projects, all the shows on YouTube, on the right side, you see that, uh, all the social media, check it out. Globallyballing.com is the website to go to. And you can catch us live now on Twitter. Go to the Globally Balling Twitter page, and uh, our episodes on AOB are live on Twitter. Follow us on social media. Linktree slash Globally Balling is the link that you need for easy access to all of that, which I just mentioned. Here we are. It's episode 156, 156 ng ating show. This is Sid Ventura, Noel Zarate, and I'm Charlie Kuna. And we come to you today with episode 156. Sa araw na ito, very good friend of ours is our guest. He's, he works with us at the PBA panel um, now. But he used to be a star for La Salle Green Hills in high school. Brought him to a championship there. Went to Ateneo, back-to-back -back championships in the UAAP. Then played in the league, PBA, for 11 years. For three different franchises, a very productive career as a defensive stopper, particularly for those big imports. Magulang ito eh. let's talk about what he used to do to those imports. Our good, good friend, let's bring him in, Enrique. Eric Reyes is with us. Aronito, Rick. Welcome to our show. Salamat. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to be here and it's actually an honor for me. Na inimbitan nyo ako in this show. Uh, I've, I've uh, tuned in to a lot of the previous episodes, and uh, it actually puts a lot of pressure on how I'm going to present <laughs> myself and give a brief history of how basketball yeah. affected my life. Yeah. Yeah. Eric, you know, whatever, whatever happens, Eric, ikaw na may pinakamagandang background sa lahat ng guests na. <laughs> oh, di ba? Sigurado yun. Kung ko na lang binawi. <laughs> Diba? Guys, no, totoong, the... totoong ano yan, totoong dagat yan, baka isipin nyo, zoom background yan. That's actually a real one. Asan ka ba kayo, Eric? Uh, I'm in a school. 
Yeah, I'm in a Sugbu. Uh, I've been living here um, throughout the pandemic. Tapos, uh, since everything, since ang bukas na nga sa Manila ngayon with a lot of, uh, you know, our, yung tra- trabaho natin, I really have to go back and forth now. So it's really less time for me here. But, you know, I just love being here closer to nature. Who would not want to be there with a the background like that? You know, it, umpisahan pa na, no, kakaumpisa pa lang natin, may alas ka na agad, si Boy at Francisco. Ayun, my high school idol, Eric Reyes, bata ako. Bata pa ako, napapanood ko na yan maglaro, sabi ni Boy at Francisco. Pistolero. El Pistolero. Diba? Pistolero. Yeah. Grabe, di ba? So, nandun, nag-alas ka na agad. But, that, yun nga, so, but, but that, that was later on in your life na nagsama-sama kayo ng mga yan and some of the other pros. Uh, of course, we've had, you know, JV Gayoso was your teammate, like Jolly Escobar was your contemporary, more or less, yung mga kaibigan natin. But balik tayo sa umpisa, Eric. Um, bakit basketball? How do you get into the sport? Well, uh, I started out being a table tennis or a ping pong player way back in in high school. That was in, oh, rather in grade 6. Pero kasi in one of the Christmas reunions, my tito, Chit Pineda, was the one who told me, tangkad-tangkad mo, bakit hindi ka mag-basketball? I was already <laughs> close to 6 feet na yata, almost 5'11 at that time, around grade 6, grade 7. And then, so, yun. And then, of course, my family, I'm, I come from a family of 7. Ako yung bunso, tapos lahat yung mga kapatid ko, sports-minded, they play basketball also. So, minsan-minsan, nakikilaro ako doon, but I was never really good at it. Until my tito, who was very much uh, connected to the San Miguel group because of uh, uh, of uh, Boss Danding. And then, of course, yung panahon nila, Coach Ron Jacobs for the national team. So they decided to say, sinabi ni tito, cheat sa akin, ang tangkad mo, ba't hindi ka mag, ano, mag-basketball? So yun, um, I started to try out. Naglalaro ko sa Inter Barangay in Mandaluyong, but it really never came close to my heart kasi wala eh. It was always a failure. Uh, hindi ako natanggap ng tryouts. I was a week over age. I tried out the following year. I continued to play in inter-barangay competitions. Uh, wala eh. People were just like, you know, who's this tall guy? Very lanky. Tapos hindi rin naman masyadong magaling. So, it was it was tough in the beginning until I started getting, you know, being good at it. Um, started with the Nice championship in our inter barangay, best center nga, at, in fact. And then, yun, I started to try it again in Lasal Greenhouse and I got accepted in second year high school. Okay. Sa Lasal Greenhouse, maganda program dyan sa Greenhouse ever second. since nung, eh, nung 80s. Eh. Maraming magagaling. Yeah. Sino yung mga, yeah. mga kakampi mo when you, eh, when you entered the varsity in... in uh... Well, yes, yung mga nauna nga sa akin doon, of course, I've, I've been hearing a lot uh, during the NCAA heydays. Uh, of course, si Coach John Wichico was one of the stars of the, the LaSalle Green Hills team way back. And then, of course, you know, Joey Guanyo was has been our superstar ever since. Si Joey talaga yung bumabandera dyan eh, when it comes to, you know, being the best uh you know high school baller when it comes to LaSalle Green Hills. Ako naman, it's really more... I played like, uh, you know, since I was the tallest in the school or maybe the second tallest, then I, I started really getting good at it. Of course, Joey Guanyo has really been influenced, has been parang like, a, you know, there's like a healthy competition between me and Joey. Uh, syempre, nung ping pong ako, I've been very competitive already. Um, and then, uh, si Joey nga was also part of that uh uh, reason why I became really competitive because, siempre, I wanted to be also become good at it. And uh, Joey was really the one who was always like on, on a d- daily basis in high school. She yung parati kung kalaban kasi she yung isa pa sa pinakamagaling na player namin at that time. Yeah, yeah. Ayun. idol mo nun, Eric, basketball wise, PBA and, and NBA. Okay, uh, of course, PBA. Um, my idol was really Mon Fernandez because I really like the way yung, yung size ni, uh, ni Don Ramon, aside from his ball handling skills, his passing, his scoring. Uh, payat pa siya noon, eh. ganun din ako kapayat ng high school. Um, pero sa team, when it comes to teams naman, I like Chris pa. So, it's mag, 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 nga, it's uh, contrasting. <laughs> you choose a rival player from Toyota and then gusto mo naman, Chris pa. So, but then, you know, those are the things that I started to emulate on how uh, I would want to project myself as a basketball player back then. Of course, NBA naman, ganun din. Magic Johnson, matangkad, 6'9", he can bring the ball down. 
and uh, of course Larry Bird when it comes to shooting again rivals na naman so we just look at the you know the good things and good things that each yeah. and every player can really bring out in my own uh, experience how did they influence your style of play naman sentro nga nilalaro mo nun dati were you an outside shooting center were you a ball handling center wala pa alam mo noel during that time i i never really got to shoot far uh, it's really more on the perimeter kasi nga uh, yung hinahabol nga sa akin noon is really my height. At around, maybe I was only 6'2 at the time, 6'1. Pero syempre, medyo nangingibabo ka na back then. You know, matangkad na yung height ko noon. And uh, a lot of them were mostly post-ups and uh, playing inside, blocking shots. Um, of course, everything, ganun na ganun yung laro ni Mon Fernandez, ganun din eh. But like I said, syempre, it took a while before I could have that kind of ball handling skills uh, the way Mon Fernandez had. But then, behind the scenes, you know, my, my siblings, uh, you know, all my siblings were always playing in the Inter Barangay, so I was also always watching them play basketball. And uh, dun, marami akong natututunan dun sa mga napapanood at nakakalabang ko sa Inter Barangay alone. So, that in itself was uh, something that I always you know, cherish. In the way, I, when I look back at how I developed my skills as a basketball player, even the way I read uh, on the floor, um, lahat yun ang galing do sa, sa mga kapatid ko because we always talk about the game. And uh, mm. una nga, uh, I remember, my eldest brother, si Butch, uh, who is in Vancouver now, um, hindi niya, sinasali lang nila ako pag nag-5 on 5 kami dun sa yung parking lot ng Reyes Gym ngayon. That's where we, we started playing lang with the neighbors. Si Papa B, boy, you know, the late uh, Boyd season was always in my house. Every single day, nagkakal- naglalaro kami niyan. And then, um, ayun, that, and then pag wala yung eldest brother ko, hindi ako pinapasalik. I was so little at that time. Eh. Um, hanggang sa nung lumaki na ako, ayaw na nila akong isali because I was already blocking their shot at that time. So that's how, you know, it really all started for me. And that's something that's, uh, you know, when I look back right now, oh, grabe, it's really the grind eh, all, all the way through. Kailan mo naisip, Rick, na medyo parang mag- gumagaling na talaga ako rito? Kasi sabi mo, lanky ka, hindi ka naman magaling ng umpisa, saling pusa ka lang and all of that. When did you start feeling, of course, when you were tall and blocking their shots, may advantage ka na, but, but skills-wise, you know, uh, where, when, when were you, when did you start becoming the go-to guy uh, of your team? Um, it started, ano talaga eh, uh, from the Norman De La Cruz days of my high, he was my high school coach, to Virgil Villavicencio, to back to Norman, a lot of them were very much influential kasi nga back then, Laker, Laker showtime yung laro. So fast break, so trabaho mo, trabaho ko as a big guy, it is to really rebound and uh, go on an outlet pass. But then, hindi naman masyadong, you know, at the time, the skills started to come out after my fourth year high school. Kasi that's the time when I really developed my face-up jumpers, baseline jumpers, and even uh, defense. Kasi nga, nung time na yun, luma- gumaganda yung performance ng Lasal Green Hills in the mga high school competitions. In fact, umabot nga kami sa yung sa inter uh, intersecondary. And that was when I had to face uh, the great legendary Benji Paras. And after that, you know, every time kalabang ko si Benji, I was always intimidated. He was always dunking on me. Um, but that intersecondary finals was really something that I don't really know what happened. <laughs> Maybe a lot of prayers came about, uh, and then all the blessings just came in, and I I just literally stopped Benji, and we won that championship. And that's yeah. the time I, I feel that was the turning point. Eh? Everything started from that era, from that uh, that that fourth year high school for me. In fact, I met, you know, uh, kaibigan natin na Matalik and of course the late Barry Pasqua. Barry was the first guy who did a write-up for me after high school. Mm-hmm. And, you know, nakakatuwa nga kasi fast forward to when we were partners in the sports casting industry. You know, eh, parang dati mong, you know, uh, he was a guy who helped me mm-hmm. na makilala, na, to be recognized by the college teams. And then, you know, nakakasama ko pa, uh, you know, way back when we were working together in the sports casting industry. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Eric, you mentioned a while ago yung Reyes Gym, ano? um, for those who don't know, yung Reyes Gym sa Mandalu, yung, yung your family uh, owns that. Ano? Then, 
uh, late 80s, early 90s, a lot of uh, PABL, PBA teams started ano, were practicing there. No? Pero you, growing up, uh, may, mga nag, may mga pro or semi-pro teams sa na nagpa-practice doon. And, you know, who would you be watching while they were practicing? Uh, you know, the history of Ray SG, when I look back, you know, it, it's medyo sentimental for me because in, back in 87, 88, um, my father, uh, the late Dr. Ernesto Reyes, decided to put up a gym. Kasi nga, uh, syempre, when I was really getting good at it and I was really going around, kusan sana ako pumupunta eh, para lang maglaro ng basketball, uh, he decided, sabi niya, you know, we, he wanted to convert the property in race in Mandaluyong na maging basketball court para at least hindi na kung saan-saan ako <laughs> pumupunta para maglaro ng basketball. And then, uh, unfortunately, you know, he had a heart attack back then and he was in the ICU for a long time. So we were kind of down because of so many challenges financially when it came to the hospital bills. Um, so nung natapos yung race gym, unfortunately, he didn't really see it. Pero nung 1990, January, when it first opened, I don't know, for some reason, you know, um, all the PBA teams were transferring there. Kasi at that time, wala pang maple maple wood nun. Mahal pa yun eh. Ang ginawa namin nun, we just used uh, local wood. Tapos yung, um, uh, my mother was the one who, uh, who uh, no, this, uh, and my father was the one who, you know, tried to improve what, kasi we've gone around Manila and then nakita namin yung mga problema ng mga basketball court. So matigas, etc., etc. So here, yun, what was supposed to be just a playground became a business. And uh, all the teams from uh, Shell was in the morning and then my Pepsi pa yun at that time. And then uh, there was also Pure Foods. Hey, and eh. uh, oh. Swift at that time, I think they still had the RFM gym and they were practicing oh. there most of the time. So going back to your question, Sid, I think a lot of the stars during that time, of course, Benji was already with Shell. I was already watching uh, a lot of the Pure Foods uh, players back then. Of course, Cap Alvin was already there. Uh, the defense minister was already there. So that in itself, back in 1990, mapapanood mo eh. Nandun ako sa bintana. Tapos makikita ko from the parking lot, papasok yung, yung mga superstars na pinapanood mo from, from the college. I mean, from yeah. uh, from back. So parang, yun, manunood ka na lang talaga. Mon Fernandez, I think, a couple of times was also practicing there. So that in itself became a uh, an inspiration for me. Um, but then, you know, going back, guys, I... It's really the fourth year. When I look back now, it's really my fourth year high school that to, uh, that sinabi ko, I want to be a PBA player. And that became a dream back then. Because um, my, my main goal back at that time was, sabi ko, was my mom and dad were, you know, sending me to La Salle Green. As they were paying for my tuition fee. So sabi ko, why not? You know, I wanted to at least have or play in the PBA because it was lucrative already at that mm -hmm. time. And I said, uh, perhaps maybe in college, I, at least I could spare them, you know, sending me to uh, a, a university that they have still have to pay for my tuition fee. So, yun, uh, luckily, when I chose Ateneo to be my college team, Ateneo gave me a scholarship back then. So, lahat yun eh. it's all like a flashback to me after Sid asked me how, you know, <laughs> to, him, to my college and, of course, to my idol PBA players. <laughs> yung, yung, yung question ko naman doon, of course, you played for Lasal, you were a superstar for Lasal. Why not stay in Lasal? Didn't they offer you a scholarship also? Uh, in the beginning, ano, um, Atine was never in the in the radar. Eh. It was never yeah. it was never in my mind that I would go to a rival school because at that time, of course, my good friends now and even back then, my brothers in Ateneo, we I was never really thinking of going there because they were eto nakablue nga ako pero sandali may may green naman ako dito kasi baka may green sa likod mo ayo no dala pa dala wa diyan lasalin natin eh i had to put it because i didn't want any of my friends to go to schools na kirain ako dito sa sa ating chat so um when i was trying out i tried out for all um Len Mumar who was my teammate in high school was already na tineo and he was telling me, Eric, dito ko na lang. Uh, okay dito, uh, blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, try out din ako sa Lasal Taft. Nung nasa Lasal Taft ako back then, sila Dickie Bachman, Joey Santamaria. Yeah. Uh, coach Derek Pumarin was the head coach. 
wala wala akong naging teammate kasi from my high school. Tapos ano, um wala na naman ako nakasama doon from high school. So wala akong masyadong kilala. So when I was trying out, pare, I felt like an alien there. Wala akong masyadong ah, okay. Pero before I chose Ateneo, guys, ito yung ito yung uh, secret dito. I really wanted to go to UP. Uy! UP yeah. I heard Uy! the story about that. Yeah, uh, sige, go. Uh, yung, yung totoo dyan, kasi after that championship uh, against San Beda, uh, Coach, uh, Coach Joe Lipa sent someone that he wanted me, Benji Paras, and Joey Guanyo to try out for UP. And at that time, UP was struggling, di ba? Matagal bago um, nag-champion. And then dumating nga si Benji, nag-champion. So I was already trying out. I was already, uh, of course, you know, tatay ko yan si Jolie pa. Uh, I really wanted to play for him. Pero for some reason, my father, um, because of my father's mindset back then, you know, yung old school nga, ayaw nila, ayaw nila ako papuntayin sa UP. In fact, nag, 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 nagkatampuhan pa nga kami ng dad ko because I really wanted to go to UP. Pero, you know, um, for some reason, of course, uh, I, I obeyed my parents and that, that's how I ended up in Ateneo talaga, no, Noel. Um, it, it was parang hindi ko talaga, hindi ko talaga inisip eh. There are so many things in this basketball uh, career for me that I never even thought that would happen to me. Like going to Ateneo, I never, gusto ko nga sana UP, di ba? So... You know, dami, dami talaga nangyari because of, uh, you know, because of uh, many things in, in this basketball world. Yeah. Well, we're getting into that. No? We're talking about yeah. your playing days already. I think perfect na perfect. May mga hinandang photos si Sid si Ventura. It's a segment yep. that we call Time Capsule here on our show. And Time Capsule, uh, at least this first half, is brought to us by Champs House of Chicken. You can try their house roast chicken with the garlic uh, sauce and the gravy. You can check mm. them out on Facebook and Instagram, mm. Champs House of Chicken. They deliver... To Metro Manila, Cavite, and Laguna via Lala Move and Talk Talk. Okay, let's enter the the time capsule now. Picture number one. Yeah. <laughs> Medyo Pero LSJ, Medyo so one of your yeah, one of your teammates sent this to us just a couple of days ago. Yeah, right uh, there. Joe is beside me. Yeah, Joe yeah, Losada. You know what, guys? Just looking at the picture alone. Uh, this was in Rizal Memorial before the start of the MMBL tournament. And that first game was against Ateneo. And JV Gayoso was their best, their best player, Jun Reyes. Dun ko unang ano, nakalaban sila eh. And that's what uh, that photo gave a lot of memories. And by the way, there are a lot of players in that in that roster that are a lot better than me athletically and uh, and, and skills wise. And uh, if you ask me why I I was the one, me and Joey ended up in the PBA and not them. It's really, I don't know, eh. Um, ganun din, eh. You know, I, I wanted to share that in this forum kasi nga, yung basketball started out for me na hindi naman, ta- you know, if there were scouts back then sa Inter Barangay alone, maraming makukuha to hindi ako. Diba? Ganun din dito sa Lasal Green Hills, eh. There are a lot of these guys who are equally or even better than me skills-wise, but I don't really know, eh. Parang, parang there's a lot of, uh, um, Probably it's destiny, siguro, as they say, because yeah. hindi ko talaga kalain eh, na aabot ako dito sa ganitong time na with my skill level that I really had to continuously work on, even my athletic ability. Wala yan lahat eh, di ba? I had to really work hard at it compared to the other guys who were in my team. Sinong iba gumagawa dyan sa team na yan? Joey Guadio, oh, siyempre ikaw. Pero Joey sino Lusada yung magigaling siya? There. Um, so, he, 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 he's the one who sent the photo, si Lusada. Joe, yeah, Joe Lusada. he was on the, he's on the, yun, katabi niya yung isa si, si yan yun eh. Um, he, so he's the one squatting down. Of course, Jong Salomon could also be another point guard, uh, a tall guard. Rene Ramos was one of our most athletic uh, players, but he was only around 5'10". But he could have been a Dindo Pumarin also at that time, di ba? So, Yung mga ganyan, uh, there were a lot of times that when I see all these pictures and we, you know, when Charlie told me about uh, this discussion, sabi ko, I was already looking back at uh, the many things that happened to me to bring me to where I am today as a sportscaster and previously as a basketball player. Did, did any of them, aside from you and Joey, play at least at the collegiate level? Si Len Mumar naglaro. Si Joel, Ay, last, okay. yeah, uh, Len Mumar played in uh, UP and also played in Ateneo. Ateneo. Oh, si, uh, Joel Osada played for San Beda. 
the other guys went to DLSU, pero I'm not sure if they were able to play in college. Ne. They could have been part of the training pool. Pero as it is, because like pag nasa college ka na, all high school great players nagsasama-sama. Mm, yeah. yeah. Because I'm just imagining for this team to beat San, the legendary San Beda Red Cubs led by Benji Paras, you guys must have had very ano, you know, talented players there. Uh, actually, Sid, uh, this was not the team that beat San Beda. Ah, okay. Hmm. Meron pang isang team. Uh, Anong year ka dito? Uh, I was third year high school. Ah, third year, third year dito. Sa so, fourth year, sino mga pumasok para lumakas kayo lalo? Um, a lot of these guys in this picture are no longer in the fourth year team kasi nag-graduate na sila. Okay. And most of, siguro, ilan lang, siguro, um, two, three, maybe ano lang, apat lang yata kaming umakit eh, dito so, to the fourth year team that beats San Beda. Sino yung mga nadagdag? Sino yung mga pumasok? Sino yung mga batang pumasok nun? Well, Ricky Henson was... Uh, I remember Henson. Ricky Henson yeah. went in. Uh, of course, si Mark... I limited him to 30 points in one game pala, by the way, si yeah. Ricky Henson. <laughs> the, 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 yeah. the way the three of us all nodded our heads when Eric mentioned Ricky Henson. Legendary yeah. Lasal Green is player. Matindi yung Ricky Henson na yan, partner. Yeah. Oh, Sila yung dalawa ni Lian Mukar, parang impossible. Oo. Oh, oh. um, Ricky, Ricky was around 5'11". Very good at the open court. He's not a great jump shooter back then. He's more of a set shooter. Pero kung mapasok din siya, he would yes. in the finals against San Beto, he scored, I, I remember, around 27 points. He was our top scorer. Si Binky ba teammate mo? Yes, Binky, Binky was one batch lower. So he, Binky was also part of the LaSalle team that beat San Beto back then. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 87 din pumasok ng college. Si, was si Johnny Santos was your teammate? No, no. Johnny Santos was uh, was already playing in the kumbaga this is the eh, the NC team eh. Yung mas mababa team before okay. may mga paya, may mga smaller yeah, yeah, yeah. AL. Kasi so, so, kami naglaban nun dati eh. Yeah. yeah. Johnny was there pero hindi na nagtuloy si Johnny pagdating ng fourth year. Okay. Okay. I remember this. Yeah. Sino ba Arnel Arnel Yeah. Arnel Guste ba nag- yeah, uh, Arnel was also one batch below. Kabasha sila Johnny, if I'm not mistaken. Eh. Um, he was in. Kami mga kami mga kabatch nila nila gusto. Sabay kami nag upkat nun eh. Ar Arnel was ano um, one batch below. Pero di ko ni ko rin siya kasama in the in the team. Eh. He he came uh, the following year na. He was the one. He was one of the guys who who were elevated already to the high school team and then eventually to the LSU. Yeah. 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 So Ricky Henson went on to UP for college. I alam, alam ko he tried out a couple of times, pero for one reason or another, hindi, hindi siya natuloy sa varsity. Which varsity is weird, team, no? Parang weird, yeah. well, siya, yeah. Uh, yeah, for whatever reason. Rama ka. Yeah. Guys, mar maraming ganyan. I, I, I know a lot of those guys na from the S even 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 the Kiefer Rabena era of uh, Lasal Green Hills, ang daming kasama ni Kiefer na kasabay niya na magagaling din na hindi na umakyat. Uh, pagdating for various reasons na injure yeah. or uh, uh, yung iba nag decide na lang you know, to play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But of course they still play basketball sa mga alumni league. Oh, and of course, course. Dito, kita mo naman well, skilled pa rin yung mga players. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ricky played for the Eng team ng UP na eh. Sa intramurals. I'm sure so, the Don Manning oh, is Don. Oh yeah. So as a team ni Jay Mercado yung yung, 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 ano, yung IBA. <laughs> yung no. IBA org team ni Jay Mercado na. Doon ba siya? Na okay. coach niya oh. Nandoon <laughs> siya. Anyway, yeah. Like, uh, Galeng, so thank, thanks to thanks to Mr. Lozada for this uh, this photo that he sent us no. <laughs> Joel pala. We got one. We got one yes, from, from Yes, Joel has a lot a lot of my pictures come from Joel also. So okay na okay. And then of course, uh, si Eric stands out. Uh, Joey Guanyo, kitang-kita silang dalawa sa gitna. And, and I, for those who didn't get to watch them back then, we were able to watch them. And that was a crazy... Yeah, Ay, magaling oh, talaga oh. yung... Magaling to mga to. This was something yeah. was, was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Nagkuna na rin akong kalaban nun, ha? Oh, yung kapatid ko. <laughs> Pero tinambakan yata ninyo ng mga korenta eh. So, di ba? Huwag na natin pag-usapan. Hindi <laughs> naman. Hindi naman. Uh, it was also close. They had a very good uh, shooter of DLSU. Si Eddie Villaplana was back in uh, yeah, yeah. Southridge. Yep, yep, yep. Pero Southridge wala. Yun yung talunan nung liga nung mga panahon na yun. Hanggang ngayon. Pero ganun, huwag na natin pag-usapan yan. Ganun talaga eh. Let's move on to the next photo of the time capsule. Yan. Yeah. Oh. Ba? 
RPU. I know, so ano na to RPU na ito. So so you're you're uh, playing in uh, you're playing in La Salle Green Hills, sikat ka na and then Ateneo recruits you, no? You choose Ateneo uh more because your dad wanted you to go there and and so, so where where in the timeline does RP Youth come in? Ah, okay. RP Youth came in in 86. I entered the Tineo in 86 also. So mm -hmm. in the middle of the year, I tried out for the team, uh, for, for the uh, 86 team. Kasi nga, nagkaroon ng problema sila because of age requirements. Yes. Back then. So nag-revamp yung team and then they, in the matter of a month and a half, nagpa-try out. Uh, natitira na lang, one and a month and a half before the 86 uh, youth team started. So nag-try out kami. So again, you know, alam mo naman yung sad story ko, hindi rin nakuha nung una. And then after which, it uh, si, siguro maybe like a week or two weeks after, si Apet Hau. I don't know if you remember Apet Hau. He yeah, played Apet Hau. He stably, yeah. mga ganyan. Mm -hmm. He was also overage. They found out he was also overage. Wow. So someone called me. I, I just couldn't remember who. And then I ended up going back to... Uh, you know, to the tryout. Pinasali na ako doon. And uh, guess who was the head coach? Jolly Pot. Jolly Pot was the head coach. But were you, were you the last cut? Were you like the 13th guy and then you got cut before Apet Hau suddenly had to drop out? Or were you cut before that and then for some reason ikaw yung tinawag, Eric? I was, I was cut before that. And then Apet, uh, no, nawala na si Apet and then biglang nakuha na ako. Um, I, I just I'm not sure if I was the last cut or what, but I didn't make the final roster in the initial uh, when when they when they took the when they made the initial lineup. So bigla na lang they called me and then sabi nila, Eric, you know, over age ganyan, you have to come in and uh, fill the spot. Sabi ko, yeah, sure. And then so dun ako nakatikim ng ano talaga kay Coach Joe. Um, in my, oh, in ako na. <laughs> You know, dami namin pinagsamahan ni Coach Joe. In fact, you know what? I just called him yesterday. Tinawagan ko lang siya. I saw Larry Fonashare's post about Coach Joe Lipa and I decided mm -hmm. up again. I introduced my kids. Sabi ko sa mga anak ko, kung meron kang... Yan, yan yung... Uh, he was a big influence in my uh, playing career. He converted me to uh, a three <laughs> from a power forward or, or a center in high school. He converted me to a three or even a two. And then, uh, so gusto ko kayo maging, ano niyan, uh, maging uh, maturuan ni Coach Joe. So, you know, going back at this picture, a lot of times, uh, dito sila, of course, kitang-kita niya naman, Bong Alvarez, Benji Paras. Yung commissioner na yung AP yata yung nakahiga doon, ano? Oo. Oh, yeah, Vicky. Uh, <laughs> this, ano is not, yan, eh. this is not a good picture yung, to show yung, the youth. Yung dalawang posing <laughs> na matuli dyan, si, si Diggy, at saka si Joey Guanyo. Parati naman ganyan po si Joey nung, nung dati. Pero medyo pa. parang ba, talagang pa-side na gano'n eh, oh. Parang... Katabi mo si Nelson, ano pa nga ba magagawa mo, di ba? Yeah, Nelson was there, grabe. Bong Alvarez was there, mm -hmm. Yalubit was there. So, uh, you know, these guys, uh, ito nga, yung experience ko dyan, um, we were playing, we were practicing three times a day. Uh, so, meron kaming morning run and then 8 to 10 practice and then mag-weights pa kami. And then, uuwi ako sa race gym sa Mandaluyong. My dad was even the one bringing me. Pinapa My dad was really like, uh, nakabantay sa akin yung tatay ko dyan eh. And every practice, nakasama rin yan. You know, I, I don't know how my dad really fit my, you know, the schedule of being a father to me. And despite him being a doctor for a company, a company doctor, bumabiyahe yan back and forth from my Ateneo days. Talagang bantay sarado ako ng tatay ko noon. Oo, kaya mabait ako noon eh. Hindi ako lumalabas. <laughs> noon ha? Ano ngayon naman? Ano ngayon naman? naman? Mabait talaga si Eric. Wait, let's, let's go through the players. Noon, sinabi nga niya noon eh. May disclaimer. Mabait daw siya noon. Uh, ngayon na lang ako lumalabas kasi si Noel tsaka si Charlie nagyayaya pag TV <laughs> coverage. Hindi lang talaga matulog. Hindi yun, pero, wala kami kinalaman. Nipilit akong uminom. Hindi naman ako uminom. Wala. Wala. Oh, sorry, hindi tayo nakita last week, Eric. Hindi tayo nakita last week. Hindi tayo, hindi tayo nakita last week. <laughs> Just for the benefit yeah. of those who might not be able to identify more of But, you know, this experience... Guys, Nelson, yeah, and then, let's go through the players Eric, lang, siguro, one by one. Nelson, Joey, Eric, Amar, uh, uh, Magada yan, di ba? 
Mm-hmm. Mar Magada was there. Arnold Adlawan is there. Who's number 13? 13 is Mulong. Mulong, oh, wait. No, wait. Moses si Mulong yan. Kayo, kayo nakagano sa ulo ni Benji. Sinusungayan si Benji? Mulong yan. That's Mulong Orellosa. O, oh, si Mulong Orellosa. Oh, si Mulong Adamson. Si Mulong oh, Adamson. Ito si may teammate in Philip Sardines. Okay. Then, then, sa baba, si Bobby Joe. Zaldi. Zaldi. Bongalba. Bongalba. Sino yung isa na naka-white? Yeah. Naka white si Arnold Adlawan. He was the ah, point guard. Ano, no, yes. And then Dicky. Okay. Oh, si commissioner. Paano mo naman? Paano mo naman rin iskutuhin yung commissioner na ganyan yung puso? Si <laughs> yung, yung mga bata. Oh, Ilitingan <laughs> pakito sa mga bata ginagawa ng commissioner nung araw. <laughs> iskutuhin mo kaya yun pag nakita mo ganyan yung puso. Kaya nga eh, naka-Air Force o, oh, yeah. na, Nike Air Force. Pero, oh. yeah, medyo ano rin ito, mabigat itong ano, ilan, ilan ang nag-pros dyan eh. Ten of you yata went to, to the yes. NBA, no? Yeah. Yes. One of them uh, became an MVP. Oo. Oh, a lot a lot of these guys, um, well, of course, y- y- arguably, as I told, could have been an MVP as well. Mm, Correct. Yes. Of course. yes. And, uh, yeah. You know, a lot of these guys really, y- dyan, dyan ko naki- nakita yung ano talaga, dyan ako nakatikim nung yung what it is to really sacrifice and prepare for the country. Because one month and a half lang yung preparation, tapos sa uh, Rizal Memorial pa yung laro. Uh, punong-puno yung Rizal Memorial, kalaban namin China on all those teams. So that in itself is like a baptism of fire for me. And then nagkikwentuhan kami about the life story ni Bong Alvarez, who was a, of my roommate, Benji Paras. All these guys... Um, really you know was critical in the in the way I, I i approached the game and how i saw a lot of them you know in their early days as a basketball player really parang naging ano talaga nila that is one way for um to get them out of poverty you know it was hard yeah. because a lot of these guys like you know, maraming mga kwento ni Bong Alvarez sa akin and of course sila Nelson a lot of them yun, nakikita mo talaga yun, the challenges that they had and the reason why they they, they um, na, out of yung kahirapan nila nung back then in their early days, childhood, they used basketball to really give them a life. You know, mag, nagkaroon sila ng buhay uh, at talagang umunlad yung buhay nila dahil sa kanilang hard work. And that in itself is a lot of, um, you know, basketball it not only brought sports to my life but there's a lot of uh, value formation here. Mm. That's why, right, we, you right. know, when we talk about when we talk about um, in the coverage when you see teams lose, and then uh, and, you know you mga players na umiiyak pa after matalo. Sabi ko mas gusto gusto ko yung nakikita yung ganun eh, you know as a sportscaster kasi nare-relate ko yung 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 pinagdaanan ko before na talagang uh, it's a character building thing. It's a bounce back thing that you know in life it's going to be like that. That's why, in, you know, when you look at basketball, it's not just basketball as in may bola and it's a sport, it's a national sport. It's not only that. Basketball is life for me. And I see a lot of these things growing up Na, you know, you can definitely relate it to life. And I think, you know, how I am right now as, a, as an individual, as a person, as a family man a lot, or even in a businessman, lahat yan, may connection yan sa pagiging ugali ko bilang isang atleta eh. Yes. hanggang sa maging nag-champion nga kami. So that's how I always relate my my attitude even to in the workplace right now. Grabe siguro yung alaskaan dito, Eric, no? I mean, because I'm looking at whatever you say, it's a mix of Atenista, Lasalista, with sila Nelson and all these guys. At saka ang daming kalog. Ang daming kalog. I'm sure in Alaska kayo, eh. Diba? Yung mga, what itong mga Atenista, mga English spoken in itong mga to, si Vicky Bachman, mistiso, mistiso. I'm sure may alaskaan yan, diba? I'm sure Benji's in the middle of all of that, diba? He's only he's the prime mover. <laughs> Siya yung bida pagdating sa mga, mga patawa dyan. Of course, si Mulong. Uh, we had our... Tatlong shell. Yung tatlong shell yung mga promotor dyan. Oo, oh, ang kukulit. Tapos sabay, uh, of course, i- i- kami ni Dicky. Um, back in 86 kasi, nat- natapos kasi yung UAP noong 86. Tsaka kami napunta dito sa youth team. And... Um, in fact, I had to, to underload eh. Kasi nga, nung time na yun, bagong pasok ko sa Ateneo. So, kailangan ko mag-underload para makalaro ako dito. Tapos, uh, I mean, 
the, the, the university supported me well naman in order for me to be able to at least get my uh, education going at the same time being an athlete for the national team. Right. Pero, uh, you know what, guys? Yung, yung experience ko rito sa youth team, um, pagbalik ko sa Ateneo, uh, dahil sa hirap ng training namin with Coach Joe, <laughs> yung mga planting rice na back and forth. Yeah, no, naman. Oh, naman. Tinatawanan ko na lang nung sila Jet Nieto, eh, sila Joseph, sila Albert Mendoza, all my buddies back then, pinatineo, pag sila hirap na hirap sa 20, 30 seconds, 20 sec 27 seconds, matapos mo yung drill, ako natatapos ko before in the national team, 22 eh. Wow. So, I was just so lean and fast at that time. So, kaya pala. <laughs> <laughs> Hindi ko akala. <laughs> you know, the, you know, everything, lalo na this 86 youth team, gave me that big confidence Kaya pagbalik ko ng Ateneo, grabe na talaga yung kumpiyansa ko sa laro ko. Yeah. yeah. Pero nakailang po nga lang ala ka, uh, <laughs> eh, Coach Joe. Et, eto, Ay, ah. Nakailang God damn it ka. <laughs> madami, madami. Eh, there was yeah, one game. Ito, practice game namin, kalaban namin yung Wagner. Uh, ano, not Wagner. This is mga Air Force men from uh, Angeles, from uh, Clark. Clark. Nandiyan pa yung US base nun eh. <clears throat> So, nag-practice game kami, nasa Rizal Memorial yun, nasundot ako sa mata ng isang uh, player nila. Eh, hawak ko yung bola nung binitawang ko yung bola kasi nawakan ko yung mukha ko. Pinagmumura <laughs> ni Coach Jolie pa sa, sa dugout. Kasi sabi niya, yung bola ang ganyan, hindi mo yan pwedeng bitawan, parang ginto yan. Hindi mo yan pwedeng bitawan kahit ano mangyari sa'yo on the floor. Kaya, kaya ngayon, <laughs> every time, maalala ko talaga yun, Pag tinamaan ka sa laro, kahit masakit, <laughs> yung bibitawan yung bola, <laughs> kahit ano mangyari. Uh, yun yung mga ano, kaya tinatanong niyo ako, maraming beses ako na po ngalangala ni Coach Joe. Kaya ano eh, um, iba, iba talaga eh. I, iba yung naituro sa akin ni Coach Joe. Uh, that really helped me also. Uh, not only na tinaya, but also lalong-laro na sa PBA. Yan ang, yan ang life lesson. Yeah. yeah. Ha? Napo ngalangala ka na. Eh. Oh, marami <laughs> here's another of course your 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 career in Ateneo was very successful um you had a powerhouse team which won back-to-back -back championships no you look at this photo lang a lot of these guys are very recognizable you've seen this photo uh, yeah recently. last week lang yeah last week I want to point action. out the, the photo on the right, yung caption, basahin nyo. Say, 23 points pala si Eric Reyes against Jerry Codinera in the championship game. Yep. Yeah, um, Tumitira na si Eric Reyes sa labas. And it's just Reyes. Let the Blue Eagles. Huh? Perimeter Reyes lang. Let the Blue Eagles to their oh. first UAP title ever. Uh, alam mo, ito ha, uh, i-share ko sa inyo. Um, nung time na yan kasi, wala pang, ano, wala pang mythical five, wala pang, wala yung mga various awards eh, that we see now. Wala, wala. Eh. So that, year could have been the closest you know i mean this is just you know, for me i am personal that could have been the closest time that i could have won an mvp award that season in 87 um but of course hindi mo kasi pwedeng hindi bigyan ng importansya yung ginawa naman din ni Jun Reyes eh. kasi hindi oh, no, kasi like i said i was an off ball player eh. i wasn't the one holding the ball bringing the ball down and making the decision on the floor it was really June who was feeding me the ball. Kaya laki ng pasalamat ko kay June kasi yung mga 20 points na yan, yung sa finals, lahat yan drop pass ni June Reyes sa akin. Diba? But ang maganda nga dyan, if you look at the photo, a lot of those guys, again, just like in my LaSalle team, could have made it in the UA, in the in the PBA. Um, marami dyan, nag-PBA nag, ano eh, nag, nag talaga eh. Um, of course, Nonoy, the late Nonoy Chubatico is there, was a brother to me, Alex, AV was there, etc. Marami, alos si Olsen nga at that time. And I always say this, um, Olsen was not even a superstar, hindi pa siya lumalabas yung daw an Olsen Rasela in San Miguel. Olsen was just like the funny guy, the you know, happy-go-lucky guy, jolly guy in the team. And who would have thought that he would be like almost arguably the number one point guard of in the PBA, silang dalawa na ni Johnny Abarietos naglalaban back then eh. And even yeah. for the national team. So, yun, uh, daming magaling dyan, so much history. We were down by 20 at the half, 10 minutes, uh, ano lang yan, 20, two, 
20 minute halves lang yan eh. Hindi naman per quarter ang laro at that time. Mm-hmm. This, Tapos, this was asked. Oh, this was asked last week, Eric. There was a game. I mean, you guys, ang lakas talaga. You even played the, in the province, no? Uh, you had this game against uh, Southwestern University. Yes. And what do you remember from that? Because we asked JV about it last week. Of course, Nono Chotico was the hero of that game. We had oh. a, fan who, a follower who asked that last week. And he already put it right away uh, in the comment section of your post. Na, can you ask him about it also? I don't know what you know. Yeah, um... Yung sa ano kasi, so we've been winning championships one after another. So from the UAAP. Oh, wait. In that picture, wala pa nga si Danny Francisco dyan eh. Mm. He wasn't even there. So from that time to um, uh, to the MMBL, we won the MMBL also. And then napunta kami ng national UAP. In that final, in the final game, um, punong-puno yung... Uh, what the maybe Davo Coliseum or what, I forgot the name of the gym. Davo the game is already ano. Ang ganda ng laro kasi ni uh, I think si ano pa yun eh. Calvin Tuadles was in Southwestern. June Habar, mga nag ano PBA lahat yan sa Shell. And then si si Primi Mutia, yung tatlong yan nag nag naglaro yan for Shell. And they were playing so well. Mark Talio was also there yata kung di ako nagkakamali. Hmm. So, um, pinahirapan talaga kami. And, nag, nag, ano nga eh, uh, si Jay was also one of our stars, you know, one of our scorers back then. Binigyan, binigyan si Jay nun eh. He was punched. Pero hindi nakita ng ref. Pero grabe yung labanan in that team, hang, uh, in that game, and hanggang sa nung huli nga, itong si, um, si Nonoy. Ang nangyari kasi nung no, nakashoot si, ano, nakashoot ang um, Southwestern. I think, we were, they were up by two seconds to go na lang. E nung time na yun, yung court kasi maliit. So there were a lot of um, fans already, yung mga nanonood. Halos hindi ka na maka-inbound ng bola. Sakto naman, I think it was JV pa nga yata who did the outlet pass. Pinukul nila kay Nonoy doon sa kabilang side. It was a, I remember that was a left uh, corner three-point shot. Eh, mas malapit yung three-point shot nun, di ba? Uh, not like now na yeah. they're adapting to the PBA uh, three points. And Nono hit that shot and we won by one point. As in buzzer beater talaga. What an experience. Um, as in, yeah, kami lahat. Kasi no one really expected na mananalo kami. Until, of course, you know, Nono was really a hero at that time. <clears throat> he was like clutch. And uh, miski naman nung, you know, in this photo here, Nonoy was always one of the guys who would bail us out, uh, lalo na in close games. He was always clutch and he would always deliver at crunch time when needed. Kung baga siya yung pinaka-savior namin eh. Siya yung pinaka-jojo lastimosa namin, fourth quarter man as they say. Mm-hmm. Diba? So, um, going to the next year, yung 88 championship naman, Nonoy was not there anymore. And we continuously are looking within the roster kung sino yung magpapalit kay Nonoy who will be the you know the savior of the team lalo na when the game is really close. Okay, who step up? So see now. See step up. Can we go to the next photo? I think that's the 88 team eh, para we can see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah kasi yeah, si Fritz na yun eh. That's f- Yeah, this is this is still the 87 team. Okay. This ah, is still part sure. of the 87 team. Uh, Pero that's yeah. Fritz na, di ba? Na naka-stripes? That's Fritz Gaston na, di ba? Ah, no. No, that's uh, si Joey Dunka yan. She, he's, ah, our, okay. he's our one of our student managers at the time. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Ito yung nagsisimula pa lang kami for training for the 87 finals, eh. Kaya, ano, uh, medyo mga... Ma- <laughs> ano pa kami dyan? Mukhang mga high school players ang papayat, tapos sabay... Um, Uy, Araneta sa kay Francisco lalaki na. Oh, wow. Yeah, they were they were 6 foot 6 already at that time. And uh pero alam mo Noel, pag titingnan mo yan and you fast forward it to today, maliliit na yan ngayon <laughs> sa mga oh, players wow. na nakikita natin uh, in our current UAP uh, rosters. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of big guys. Sino yung Shete, Rick? Yung naka-load na naka-shete? That's Jet. That's Jet Nieto. That's Jet Nieto. Parang iba yung tura niya. I was thinking it was him, but I wasn't sure. Parang, okay. That's him. Okay. May pagka... Who are, you, who are the other guys, Rick? Can you, can you tell us where it's from? So, Jet Nieto, who's beside him? And then That's Mel Basa. Um, he, yeah. he almost made it to the PBOs, but he decided to uh, take... May, may, may ano siya? He was 
parang IT is an IT guy eh. and I think he's doon napunta yung kanyang ano eh, calling. Uh-huh. Um, there's another guy on the, yung sumunod kay Mel si Ramses Reynoso. Okay. He hindi na, parang feel am yan eh. Uh, he okay. could have been a good point guard pero hindi rin nagtuloy. Mm-hmm. And then of course this is Eddie Boy Ocampo anak ni um, okay. coach coach Ed. That's oh, all Eddie Boy was on the two was on the team. Eddie Boy, Eddie Boy Campo was in the in the in the team pero nung final um uh, final cut nung nag-cut na talaga noon what nawala na si Eddie Boy. Ang galing maglaro niya na I used to watch him in Alabang before. Galing ni Eddie Boy maglaro. Pa, syempre para mana sa air pat, pero, Yeah, yeah, super bilis. Okay. Yes. And you then of course show. you used to watch our show uh, before. Ah uh, yeah, Eddie Boy, the nice part about Eddie Boy is ano, he, he could have been a good point. He's manang mana sa daddy niya. Uh, he was really very quick. Um, he was really working out with yeah. us a lot. Pero for some reason, hindi na rin nasama dun sa final roster. Eh. Yeah, yeah. The next is Olsen, di ba? Olsen, Jojo Habana. Wait. Um, di ko masya- I couldn't really tell. Uh, I think this, no, that's not Joseph Canlas. That's not Joseph. Oh, that's Hajj Jong ko pala. Si Hajj. Yeah, yeah. And then sa likod, that's Raymond Morales, Joseph mm-hmm. Canlas, oh, si Albert Rosa, um, and then Alex, Alex me, me, and then uh, I think it's Avi and June. Yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, you mga yata. Grabe no. <laughs> Wala lang, parang ano, memories lang para sa akin. Dami, dami, dami memories, memories talaga. Memories eh. Memories eh. Mm-hmm. Anong, it was different, it was different then. The Eric, I just want to ask about, of course, Danny Francisco. I mean, uh, how, how good would he have been if he had not uh, had health issues? If if Danny was able to play, he would have been uh, the next Mon Fernandez, even in the PBA. I would say. Could you do you think he could have been better than Mon? Because Mon was your idol, and we we look at Mon as the, the best ever. Um, kaya ba niya surpass si Mon Fernandez? Or medyo ganun ganun lang din? Um, I think it's hard. It's hard kasi to tell with his skill set back then. Danny, kasi ang mangyayari dyan, Charlie, when you, when you move up, uh, especially in the PBA, um, he's taller than Mon or almost the same as Mon. He could have, uh, I think he could have even been at least the same level as Mon or even better. Kasi nowadays, when, when I look back at the, the skill set of all the players, syempre idol natin si Mon. Pero eventually nagkakaroon na ng weight training, di ba? Nagkakaroon na ng more um, skills Scientific, training yeah. mo uh, the next level eh. And it started during my time eh. So, if, if uh, on a skill set basis, uh, kaya ni Danny mag-point guard kasi Fritz Gaston in one exhibition game in Baguio, he made me and Danny a point guard. Right. Kasi Fritz Pinedoli, Gaston... Pinedoli, Coach, Pinedoli Fritz, Pinedoli Fritz, oh, Coach Fritz had already uh, um Parang at that time, ini, ginagawa na nilang, ina, ina-upgrade na nila yung mga guards eh. Kasi the game is really all about creating mismatch. So pag guardia kami, sino magpe-pressure sa amin? Kung mag-pressure yung point, they, we could just go on outlet and post ka na kagad. Tapos na yung story. Ah, diba? You can easily post up and score. Lalo na kay Danny. Patay kay Danny yun. Mm-hmm. So yun yung ano. Um, so nakakapag-point si Danny. And then... Uh, Ang dami kagad madedevelop nun pag nag-point guard siya. So, may tira si Danny sa labas. He has good uh, post work. So, maybe ang magiging difference niya, he, he could even surpass si Don Ramon kung may three points, may three, madagdagan pa niya ng three-point shot. Oh, ito, ito, mas, ito, Eric, mas madaling tanong. If uh, um, Danny Francisco in his prime went up against Benji para sino lamang? May, may, magkakahirapan din magkakahirapan kasi tower of power eh. <laughs> we, we saw how we saw what uh, I mean it's it's on the on the defensive end Danny can play him outside diba pero kung ang laro ay yung PBA Jaworski oh. medyo mahirapan si Danny oh. miski nga ako nahirapan <laughs> kasi <laughs> kasi kami nag-weights na kami noon pero si Benji ibang klase talaga <laughs> <laughs> yung raw strength, ano? Uh, raw power. Kalabaw, eh. kalabaw. Mahirap, mahirap. Pero yun nga, like I said, Benji will be able to give us a hard time on offense, uh, on, on defense. 
Pero pag kami umipensa, we can take Benji outside. Yeah. Danny can take Benji outside. Pahihirapan nyo rin si Benji. Yeah. Kumaga, pa, yes, so, so it's going to be like a uh, give and take yan. Give and take. So, okay. Ma- kaya, kaya kami kainin ni Benji sa ilalim or in the... Pe- Pero pagdating sa perimeter, lamang na kami. Kasi even in the UAP, when we were playing him, Danny was scoring against Benji. I was also scoring against Benji more on the perimeter. Hindi kami nakakaposti kay Benji. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you were gonna, uh, mentioning something about the 8-8 team. Someone needed to step up. Hindi yata natuloy yung train of thought mo doon. Who... Uh, 88, sino nag, what happened there? Well, well, of course, it was also June Reyes who was the MVP of the season. Um, ang talagang nag-step step up nun, si Danny. I would say si Danny. Um, a lot of the games, especially in the finals, it was Danny who was uh, you know, playing great basketball. JV, JV was also... JV had a great first round. And in a way, um, parang na, ah, nangyari, Nonoy was always saving us from close games. Pero nung, nung, ano, nung 88, parang nag, nag-spread eh. Ayan, o, yan yung uh, after the finals. Pa- the bakit game. sa Ateneo si Edu Mansano? Hindi ko mag-gets. Eh, kasi yeah, nasal siya eh. Nasal siya eh. Nasal siya eh. May pustahan <laughs> ba? Ganon? Pinasuot <laughs> sa kanya. Yung ano to, yung not so late night with Edu, di ba? Yung oh, yeah. pinasuot namin si Edu eh. At that time. <laughs> Grabe laro ni June kasi talaga noon doon sa final game. And then, well, I, re- I remember these t-shirts. I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Stevie Watson ang gumagawa nito. Si Steve Watson ang gumawa nito. Yes, he, yes. He, spray yes. Paint. He, he used to spray paint on the t-shirts. That was his business. Our, our former guest, Steve Watson, who was a Ateneo great as well. So those are Steve Watson shirts uh, that they're wearing. <laughs> yung mukha ni Edu, eh, tingin sa kanya ni, ni Olsen. No, <laughs> oh, para... <laughs> Wala siya magawa eh. Si no, masama loob ni Edu niya kasi eh, da, alam mo naman yan. green flooded yan. This oh. was uh, after the La Salle Ateneo Finals, di ba? Yes. 88 yes. yan eh. Kaya doble sa mga loob ni Edu. <laughs> Sobrang ano yun. Yung 88 na yun na La Salle Ateneo, that was like... So yung rivalry nun, grabe. Grabe talaga. As in, nagsusuntukan. <laughs> nagsusuntukan pa. Grabe yung final game na yun, ah, sa, sa, sa Rizal, no? Um, Dean Doe was playing crazy out of his mind, but but June did just did one better on that reverse. Yeah. Grabe, that reverse yeah. was... Sa ilalim pa niya, dinukot talagang ganun. Ay, Nagkakalat nga ako nun, Charlie, that, that game. Kasi nga, it's it's two rounds, eh. And then that game, Lasal beat us in the first round. And then, nung second round, that game, parang naging... Uh, Best of three. Parang ganun lumabas eh. So, we lost, we won that game because of June Reyes, Rowix. Um, pero, you know, on, on my end, I really played awful in that game. Super missing all my perimeter jumpers. Buti na lang, you know, yari sana ako dun kung ako yung patalo dun dahil ang pangit ng nilaro ko. It was June who really saved the day for all of us. Yeah, you know, he really did. He really did. Mukhang, mukhang Dindo, Dindo was gonna bring them to the win already, but wala eh. Ah. Uh, so, si Dindo nun, grabe. So much respect. Grabe, he was hitting all his jump shots, di ba? Grabe, si Dindo. So, puro jump shot. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Ganun, I remember. Uh, he was really unstoppable at the time. I mean, um, nagkakaloko-loko kami to really guard Dindo. Very hard to stop. Pero ganda nito talaga. Man siya, One ano? of the great ano, point guard rivalries yun, ano, kain college, Dindo uh, versus Jun. Yes, so, yeah. Sila yung dalawa yung talagang uh, head-on eh. Every time there's a matchup na sa Latineo. And even in the PBA, pag nagkakatapat sila, I mean, there's some kind of uh, rivalry there. Yeah, there, there really was. Dindo explained all of that when he guessed it. Medyo, yeah, really although yun nga, medyo na, naiwan nga ni Dindo personal. talaga si Jun uh, sa, sa PBA because Dindo had a spectacular PBA career. Yung, was, yung question ko doon, Eric, why, bakit hindi umabot ng 3 feet? That, that team was intact uh, coming then, into 89. Then, bakit wala na si Danny. Yun na, okay. because, was it just because of Danny? Uh, hindi, ang nangyari doon ganito. Coming into the... Uh-huh. Ito, papalapit na yung opening nun. We found out Alex Araneta, uh, our other center, nagkaano siya eh, kulang ng units. Kulang na units na na-enroll. There's a required number of units 
uh, that each student would have to have. E eh, kaso, nagkamali si Alex nun, ang nadagdag niya to complete, I think, 12 or 14 units is yung, uh, was it C- C80? Oh. So, yung, yung hindi counted. Uh, oh, oh, hindi counted. Hindi. Tapos, pati, hindi ko alam kung pati PE yata, pero wala naman kami PE nun. I think it's a CMT or C80. Oh. So, hindi counted siya. So, yun ang masakit. So, out si Alex. And then, si Danny naman, of course, nagka-problema siya with his, uh, with his heart. Right. So, out rin si Danny. So, dalawang siksik yung nawala. So, natira na lang ako. Ako yung pinag, uh, pinag-sentro ako. Eh, like I said, from high school, okay, kaya pa nung high school. Pero pagdating ng college, kwatro na yung laro ko. Tapos, babalik mo ako sa sinko, patay na. Kasi, FEU at that time, nandun na si Piblo. Wala na, 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 na pala si Blackjack doon sa PBA na. So, and then, of course, si Jude Limpot naman. Si pa yung laro ni June after niya naglaro with Danny doon sa RP Youth. Kasi nga, right. yun na nga, every time all these college guys play in the national team, you just watch most of them when they go back to college or when they, or even those PBA players na naglaro sa, sa Gilas tapos babalik ng PBA, tumataas yung laro eh. Kasi lalaki ba naman at skilled yung mga kalaban nila sa abroad eh. Uh, yung right. kumpiyansa. Yung kumpiyansa okay, talaga. Bravo. The confidence no, is really, yeah. Yeah. agree ako dyan sa iyo, the confidence ibang klase. Tama yun. Kasi di ba, nag-Philippine team kayo. So parang feeling mo, okay ako talaga. No, but even, but there were signs already of Jun Limpot uh, becoming a star. He was fielded in that 88 championship game, Rick. Pinasok siya sandaling-sandali, but he, first jump shot niya, pasok agad. I remember that eh. Pero sandaling-sandali siya naglaro dun eh. That game that uh, Jun won for you guys. So yun, Yeah, he had eh, four, eh, four points. Eh. Naka four points siya nun. Pero, yun na nga eh. That's parang like... Uh, uh, a sign or uh, you know a, a glimpse or what's what is to yeah. come yeah. for for June and uh, you know malaking bagay talaga for June was the national youth team and then of course after that wala na ibang klase ng ibang level na si June Limpot at Halim, that time halimaw or, na nung bumalik or talaga yeah. eh, no? Talagang, he, he's a mix kasi June is a mix of ano eh finesse and uh, ano skill Yung perimeter game ni Jun Limpot, kahit sa Jones Cup no, nung teammate ko siya, ibang klase talaga. I think we have one more, one more photo for this half no, of the time capsule. Is there one more, Carla? Can we show it? Ayan. Yeah, it is yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Yeah, ABC Gold. Yeah. And, uh, matindi tong uniforme nila dito, no? Parang <laughs> kulang sa Batang design. Bata talaga, pa yung Marlo Aquino dito, eh. RP Santa Lucia Realty. So, uh, speaking of Santa Lucia, Santa Lucia was mentioned so many times by JV Gayoso last week. So, now we have to mention Santa Lucia. Again, Vic Pablo. Who's the guy between you and uh, you and Vic Pablo? Uh, uh, I think that's Tony De La Serna yata. Eh. Hmm. Okay, He's, okay. He played for Santa Lucia. I know he was really a great um, shooter. Yan yung pinaka uh, parang Marshall Lassiter namin back in the day sa okay. national team. Then Jude Limpot, Coach Francis, uh, Coach Roel. Who's the Who's the fellow in the middle? Uh, I'm not sure if that's Boss XC. Um, XC, no? Si Gawang, no, it's XC Robles. Uh, yeah. Marlo, Jolly Boy, Bong Solomon, Bong Solomon. Maki. Hmm. Maki. Who are the Maki, guys sitting bro? down? Who's sitting down? Uh, Alen Sasan was here also. Uh, that's Sasan. Uh, then beside Sasan is? I, I couldn't tell. I, hindi ko masyadong ma... Oh, I couldn't tell. Johnny, ba? Johnny, get na. Johnny, si Johnny. Uh, Johnny, no, no, it's Chotico, ba? Chotico yes. and Ravenna. Uh, and Bong Ravenna. So, there's one, uh, one guy we can't identify. Who's that one guy? Come on, guys, uh, our followers. <laughs> who's that one guy? Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll figure it out. Hmm. <laughs> so, oh, man. Dahil sa book, si Rick Rick, pero hindi ata si Rick Rick yan, eh. No, no, Rick Rick. Sa Swift ko na nakasama si Rick Rick. Uh, hindi ko siya nakasama sa national team. Pero... Uh, uh, this this was parang like something also special for me because I got to work with the national team, and um, well, I I had a chance. We had a chance to play Barangay Hinebra in a practice game, and uh, etong eto si Eric Reyes tatanga tanga bubuhat sa harap ni Coach Sani Jaworski. O di nataga ako. <laughs> <laughs> Pagkatapos ako ni tinaga ni Coach Sani, pagtingin ko sa daliri ko, nangingitim na eh. <laughs> Unang hataw pa lang ah. 
Saka walang, pare, walang tunog. Walang tunog. Taga ay hindi palo. Taga. <laughs> karate chop nga. Karate, karate chop. Uh, yun yung mga experience ko. You know, like I said, all these great players. Mon Fernandez, Sonny Jaworski. Lahat yan. Ano, I had one experience after another na hindi ko talaga makakalimutan. And of course, it's something that I will keep in my heart for a long, long time. Going back to this team, Eric, uh, you had a very young Marlo Aquino in, in, in this team. Uh, may, what can you say about yung development niya? At yung nakikita mo rito, would you think he was going to be a skilled player in the PBA already? Um, he he was, Marlo was an, uh, was getting there. I, I feel that, you know, with Marlo's height at 6'9 back then, uh, of course he was still young. He could have still been uh, developed eh. But of course, there's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, um, training and a lot of skill work for Marlu, most especially, uh, you know, being the, the big guy. Siguro, just like, you know, looking back at, silang dalawa lang kasi ni EJ File yung naglalabanan sa malaki at that time and even Bunel Balikit. Eh. Yeah. So, on a daily basis, if you have uh, Marlu train overseas siguro, para lang masanay siya na may kalaban siyang mas malaki sa kanya. And then on a, on a daily basis sa practice, yun yung parati niyang kalaban. I think he would have even uh, skills-wise been better. And that's just my opinion. Um, kasi syempre sila nun nila Bunel, sila lang yung malalaki. So, di ba, yung mga experience sila sa national team naman, kukunti compared to June Marfahardo. And uh, siguro kung si Daniel Defonso, matanda na nung time na yun, eh, baka siya nagturo kay Marlo. I'm sure gagaling yan si Marlo. Kasi gusto ko si Kumar. Gumaling eh. eh. Ano pa uh, kaya si, oh, si, pag si Dani ay nagturo. Maliit pa si Dani ay nitong picture mo. <laughs> Kama si Rocky Abis. Yung, yung katabi ni, ni Vic, di ba si Chris Bade yan? So baka si yes. De La Serna yun po. Si De La Serna yeah. nakaupusin ko ito. Yung, yung mm. hindi natin ma-identify, di ba? Ay, Mel ah, Tevez. Chris, Chris, Chris. Oh. Di ko alam kung nandiyo si Mel Tevez. Eh. Mga Baste Boys yan eh. So, tama, tama. Sige, Rod. De La Serna nga, baka De La Serna nga. Before, before we leave this segment of the, this part of the time capsule, guys, uh, na-mention to sa comments page. You saw that naman, Rick, you comment, you mentioned it to me already, and now it's commented again. You had this game against the artistas. You know, uh, Eric Reyes, Joey Guano, ah. Billy Reyes, all Senatuela, coached by Ray Madrid. No, I actually, I was actually in, in Loyola gym. I was actually in Loyola gym nung, nung, nung nangyari yung game Gomez, na yun. I was there. Roldan, uh, Ronnie Ricketts, di ba? You blocked Richard Gomez five times now. Yeah, then, <laughs> hindi ko mahi. In Dennis Roldan, unstoppable sa game na yun, di ba, Eric? Yeah. Remember that game? Dennis di ba Roldan, dapat nasa right? artista oh. side si Eric fun, Reyes? Fun, fun, na fundraiser yun, eh. Fundraiser yun. Fundraiser yun. Oh. Ng UPJP, ah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was yeah, there. Yeah, that was a nice experience. That was a nice experience kasi akala ko baka ma-discover ako maging artista na rin ako. <laughs> Yun na nga eh. Bakit nga? Para ko ni, ben, ni Benji, ni Paul Alvarez eh, na naging artista rin because of basketball. But, um, you know, going to your question, ano, Noel, si Dennis Roldan was yeah. expert also. Um, laki na ng <laughs> Grabe. Uh, parang muscle man na yan si Dennis Roldan back then. So, syempre, mapet pa ako. No? So, Dennis would, you know, charge into the lane and magpapadraw charge ako para offensive foul. <laughs> Inulit-ulit mga... Kung, na, kung, kung nabablock ko si Richard Gomez, ilang beses din ako sumadsad sa sahig kasi sinasagatakadang Gomez ko dyan. <laughs> okay, uh, I, I, I need to ask this lang. I need to ask this lang, Erika. Kasi uh, that I remember, lamang kayo ng malaki, tapos mm. pinahabol nyo yung ano kasi exhibition game di ba pinahabol niya yung mga artista di ba it was, it was close in the end pero eventually you guys prevailed so pinahabol niya talaga di ba as i had a debate with uh, a college classmate of mine na babae na syempre kampi siya sa mga artista na hindi humabol talaga sila eh magaling yung mga artista sa tingin ko siya humabol talaga sila kasi yung Dennis Roldan talaga yeah. ng time na yun Alimaw. alam mo ba alam mo kasi may tira si Joey ko ano i remember Joey was playing there yung three points niya board lang ang tinamaan niya <laughs> yung mahabol yung ano. Parang imposible yung titira si Joey Guan yung nag ganun eh. <laughs> na parang pinatama lang niya sa board at pinarebound. So, Kasi nga gusto rin ni Joey mo artista. <laughs> 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 Hindi malayo <laughs> mangyari yun. <laughs> Kailangan nila ng kontrabida sa pelikula eh. <laughs> Ma- <laughs> Pwede sa doon. Pero humabol talaga. 
malakas din sila talaga, because of COVID. Humabol talaga sila eh. Oh, you know what? Rossi, yung, yung sagot, humabol talaga. Ah, humabol okay, sila. Okay, Tama yun, babaeng. Gomez was a good player. Ha? Grabe yung athletic yeah, yeah. ability niyan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Tapos yun nga, na, nanalo kayo kasi si Martin Yabera na yung nag-point guard ng dulo. Nagkalat. Tapos <laughs> <laughs> star stat din doon, aga mulak, naglaro pa noon, naalala ko eh. Pero yung that, questionable sa akin, questionable sa akin nung pinasok si Martin Yabera noong fourth quarter eh. Parang yung... <laughs> Pwede naman mo natin yun. Shooter, eh. shooter yun. Nakakalaro ko sa Reyes team yun. Weekly, I play with Martin. Dati, oh, sa Reyes team, madalas ko nakakalaro yun. May shooting talaga yun si Martin. May shooting yun. Oo, oo. Hindi nga lang siya point guard. Hindi lang siya point guard. Hindi nga lang siya point guard. Hindi nga lang siya point guard. Nanalo to yung mga bata. O may kumaka. May nangakamusta sa'yo, Eric, o. Nako. Oh, wow. Okay. O, bakit yung nakatawan mo, no? Onchi. O, matindi yung profile pic ni, ano, ha? Onchi ngayon sa Facebook. Kanina si Joey Loisaga nangamusta rin. Si Joey Loisaga. Joey Loisaga also is watching, no? Nanunod ng Aldo Perez also watching you guys. Aldo, I think that's the sa Alumni League. Nakatikim oh, din ako dyan kay Aldo eh. Binigyan <laughs> din ako yun. Aldo, ano, mag- mag- ano ka na? Change of heart ka na. Mag-guess ka na dito. Di pa sabi. nag-guess si Aldo. Maniwala ka. <laughs> oh, Aldo, sa of nice stories for you guys. I'm sure I'm he's sure. going to be... I want this yeah. to share, pero ano na eh. Ayaw it. Anyway, I think that's the first part of our... That's the first half of our time capsule. So that's that's the first half and that was brought to us by uh, Champs House of Chicken. We remind everybody, uh, Carla, that we're part of the Global Ball Network. And one of the shows on the network is Next Man Up with Diego Dario and Jello Vito, the UP boys. Dwight Howard dominates Taiwan. Why not? Diba? He's one of the best ever. So he's playing in Taiwan. He's putting up crazy numbers over there. Isaac Go. We'll talk about that with the boys. Okay, and then what's next? Uh, watch and listen to us on Spotify. Give us a five-star rating, guys. Send us some love. Okay, on Spotify. And then uh, you can become our... AOB monthly supporter for four four ninety nine. That's in dollars and cents, and then two fifty pesos per month on Spotify. And you, we will recognize you on our future episodes. We will love you forever if you become our monthly supporter, diba? So thank you. And then globally balling Southeast Asia on Facebook. Please follow that. Uh, all the snippets, those crazy snippets that Sid puts up, that makes you cry <laughs> or makes you laugh, especially because of JV. So tingnan yon nandyan lahat yon sa globally balling Southeast Asia Facebook. Parami salamat yon. So papasok tayo sa second half ng ating Time capsule, even as a former teammate of yours is watching. His name is Al Solis, watching from Houston, Texas. Wow, so Houston, Texas. Hey, Al, kamusta? Kamusta, ha? Mabuhay ka. Okay, second half of time capsule brought to us by Nihao Bread Bakery Tagaytay. Sarap na mga goodies nila dyan. Order from them on their social media, Facebook, IG. That's the number to call. They deliver to uh, Manila, Cavite, Laguna via Lala Move and Tok Tok. Yeah, Nihau Bread Bakery. Okay, let's enter the second half of the time capsule now. Of course, this, this is just Meneses. This yeah. is the rookie draft of 92. Yeah, mm. the, the picture though. The focus on the, the picture below, not on yeah. the headline by Ronnie Nathaniels mm. with a Z. Yeah. yeah, that's Jolly, Bonel, and then... Moses Mulong. Moses Mulong. Moses Mulong. Oh. Sino pa yung mga yan? Joey G. Joey, Joey, tsaka si Eric, tsaka si... Sinong katabi ni Joey G? Yung naka-stripes. That's jo- jo- Joey Valdez. Joey ah, Joe Val. Okay. Okay. He was my teammate in Philips ANW and then uh, naglaro din siya sa Adamson in the UAP. Can yeah. we talk about that shortly before we enter the draft? Let's talk about your your short PPABL career, no? You played yeah, with uh, Philips. You mentioned it. Swift, of course, and then, and then ANW. ANW and Philips, I think, are one of the same franchise. Yeah. Kamusta naman doon? Did, what did you feel? Where, when did you decide that I'm PBA ready while you were playing the PABL? Um, you, you know what happened there, Charlie, um, Sid and Noel? When I was in, in, in Ateneo, kasi we weren't really allowed to play PBL or PABL back then. Uh, it was only June who was able to, you know, um, able to play for Magnolia. Ang nangyari doon, I played for Pure Foods, uh, PABL. Um, pero sandaling-sandali lang, si Coach Ding panganiban pa ngayon nag-handle sa amin that time. So, um, I, I, I pulled out because Ateneo said, you cannot play PABL muna. So you concentrate on your studies and play for the school. So, after I played my last year in Ateneo with Coach Chot in the 1990 team, I played for Swift. Naglaro kay Coach Yeng. And uh, kasama ko nun si Verhel, si Bong Ravena, 
Uh, I believe parang maybe Jack Tanuan was also there. Um, most of those guys. Um, and then the following year or second half of that conference, nagpalit ng coach. I think Coach Yang went to the PBA. Mm-hmm. And then coach, uh, the late coach, Tembong Milencio, was my head coach. And Coach Tembong really gave me all the break that I can ask for. Um, truly grateful to that man um, because Coach Tembong just really believed in me. He gave me 40 minutes playing time. Para ako import <laughs> And then I started. Medyo tumit, pinapatira na ako ng three points nun po, konti-konti. So, um, lumipat ako sa Philip Sardines Coach Joe uh, because I I really wanted to play for Coach Joe and I really don't know why. It's talagang iba yung iba yung uh, yung, yung nakikita ko talaga na Coach Joe was really able to influence my playing a lot. So paglipat ko ng ANW Philip Sardines at that time, um, coach started to just, you know, put a lot of uh, emphasis on my outside shooting. Uh, if Fritz Gaston wanted to convert me to a point guard, Coach Joe wanted to convert me to a three. So nung panahon na yun, gusto nila talaga ako patirahin sa labas because coach said, alanganin kasi yung position ko. Pwede akong power, I was too big, I was too small to be a power forward. I was too big to be a three back then. So what does it do? Coach Joe said it creates a lot of mismatches. Eh. So pag, let's say, tumaho sa'yo, Jun Limpot, Bonel Balingit, or any, Dennis Espino pa nga at that time, I can take them out because he was really giving me the green light to just shoot three-pointers back then. Um, and then pag maliit naman, then you can, you can post up. So... Sa kakalaro ko nung time na yun, I, I discovered, na, dun, dun pa lang guys, nung time na yun, uso na yung big man kay Coach Joe na pinapatira sa labas. Diba ngayon nakikita natin, everyone talks about all these big guys shoot from the three. Diba in FIBA, all these centers shoot from the three. Ano man pa ni Coach Joe back in 1991, he was already telling my teammates to shoot from the three. Even si Joey Valdez who was our 6'5 center in Philip Sardines. Because he wanted to change the game already back then. Yeah, yeah. So, ganun kagaling si Coach Joe. Yung ginagawa ngayon, ginawa na niya yung dati. Kasi nga, iniisip niya yung how to create mismatches. He was very creative kasi with this... Ahead of his time, huh? Yeah, and training. So, kasama namin si Coach Nemi Villegas. Back then, lahat yun. They were preparing me already for PBA ball. And then, nung last conference ko sa ANW, ang ganda talaga nung nilalaro ko. Um, I was scoring well. I was really helping out. In fact, naalala ko din, I was about to graduate in Ateneo. Uh, magmamarch na, di ba? So, nakatoga ka na, you know? They did all the ceremonies sa morning, ang baccalaureate mass, tapos sa hapon, graduation. After I received, may, may knockout game kami noon with Coach Joe sa Nino Aquino Stadium. And I was all the way in Loyola. I got my diploma, so, bow, balik sa chair. Hindi na ako mupo. I went straight to the exit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was already removing, you know, yun lang yung mga nami-miss ko talaga. I wasn't really able to... Para eh. Superman, no? Para Superman. Oh, <laughs> Clark Kent na naging Superman. <laughs> Can you imagine yung time na yun? Uh, kasi pa, nag-five years ako na Ateneo. So yung batch 90 ko, nag-march na sila previously, the previous year. Kasi I stayed for another year dahil naglaro ko na UA. So after ko natanggap, Wala na yung mga with your classmates, iba, you throw your diploma up in the air and then parang yun, iba, you miss all of them. Diretso ako ng, ng ano, exit. Tapos sa kotse pa lang, nagbibihis na ako, papunta ako ng Rizal Memorial. I played, I arrived in Rizal halftime of our knockout game. And then pagpasok ng third quarter, sabi ni coach, mag-warm up ka na dyan. Pag-warm up ko, naglaro ako ng fourth quarter in the PBL and uh, I sent the game into overtime because of a corner three-point shot. And then yung overtime ko, hindi siya yung uh, five minutes. It was parang, there's a rule in the PBL in that conference, unahan maka eight points yata, parang ganun. Okay. So overtime, yeah, yeah. tapos yung yeah, game. Yeah. So I had the three-point shot. Basta I finished with eight points in that game kasi nga, uh, all my points came in the overtime already. And after the game, kausap ko si Coach Joe, sabi niya sa akin, akala ko talaga hindi ka nadadating. Alam ko hindi ka talaga dadating. He never expected that I was gonna show up. 
And um, kasi nga, he, of course, si Coach Joe, he was all, he was a he was a coach so he very selfless yan, eh. He told me, no, Eric, you graduate. Mag-graduate. Yeah, yeah. Kasi once in a lifetime lang yan. Pero hindi ako, tigas ulo ko. <laughs> Diretso ako sa, uh, sa Ninoy. Laro ako ng champions, uh, ng knockout game. And pumasok naman kami at that year. So, you know, after that, that my last year nga, fast forward, no, during that last conference, ang ganda nung nilalaro ko, kasama ko na si Boy Beats Victoria nun, si Joey pa rin, Olsen. We almost, well, we had a knockout game or Basta papasok na kami nun eh. We just needed to win one more game and then we faced Triple V, Jolly Escobar, in the final sa with Vic Pablo. Okay. Eh kaso, si Coach Joe, sinabi talaga niya sa akin, Eric, eh, papadraft na yan eh, that picture. Sinabi niya, Eric, huwag ka na maglaro sa PBL. This is your dream to be in the PBA. Again, you know, Coach Joe being a selfless person that he is, he, he told me, sayang because, grabe guys, I was really at the height, the peak of my game wherein I was like scoring a lot, something that, you know, my kids never really saw me. Uh, even my wife, you know, they always say that, you know, when they were watching me in the PBA, like especially my wife back then, sinasabi na, pinapod kami sa PBA, pasa lang daw ako ng pasa, tapos, uh, depensa lang daw ako ng depensa. Sabi ko kasi, hindi niyo inabot yung UAP, hindi niyo inabot yung my kids. They, they didn't see my, when they see the highlights in YouTube now, they don't even see me score 20 points. Eh. It's only mga, mga fouls, mga <laughs> foul, mga, yung, uh, you know, yung mga ginagawa ko na sa PBA. So, hindi na lang nakita yun. So, yun na nga, uh, pag-akyat ko, sabi ni Coach Joe, wag ka na maglaro dito. Doon ka na, sa PBA ka na maglaro. And that's what happened talaga in that year. I, I actually wanted to stay another year eh, kasi I know that we really had something good going for us in that three, uh, ANW team. Eh. Pero, you know, like I said, doon ako saludo kay Coach Joe at nagpapasalamat talaga ako sa kanya. Marami titignan ako rito, no? si Bonnell. Yeah. Kayo ni Joey pa rin talaga magkatabi, di ba? Yeah. Kay Bigan talaga, di ba? Hanggang dito. Days. Unang picture natin kanina, kayo magkatabi. Hanggang dito, kayo pa rin magkatabi. That's about, Tingnan mo uh, na lang yung sa kaliwa ni Bonel. Si ah, sa kanon pala ni Bonel. O si Lito. O si Lito may buhok pa. Jolly. Oh. Dat, dati pinaproblema pa niya buhok niya eh. <laughs> <laughs> Tayo rin di na, no? Of course, on the top, the top photo with Verhel putting on his jacket as the, as the top pick, that's that's uh, Jimmy Mariano and Moro Lorenzo, di ba? That's Moro mm -hmm. Lorenzo. Who the, the, the gym is named after him in Ateneo now. On the right side. Galing. Did you have an idea was... that you were gonna get picked by, by Swift, Eric, heading into the draft or complete surprise? Um, I actually wanted to go to Tim Cohn. Alas, Tim Alas, Cohn yeah. was already watching either Tim. Tim was already talking to Coach Joe about me going into the draft. But what happened was he coached Tim couldn't pass on the opportunity to get the best power forward in the 92 draft, which is Bong Solomon. Bong Solomon. Yeah. Diba? Dapat si Bong. And then sa number seven, they had two picks at that time. Alaska had two picks. It was Bong. And then at number seven, it was supposed to be um, me already. Uh, yeah, dapat ako sa number seven. But Swift picked me at number six. So that's why nung tinawag ko ng Swift, medyo na, sinabi, nag-usap kami ni Coach Joe after that. Sabi niya, sumama daw loob ko kasi uh, talagang I was really, you know, dead. I had my sights on uh, playing for Coach Tim. Yeah. Kasi nung sa Philips pa lang, kinakausap na ako ni Coach Tim. So, so, sinigit. so talagang parang surprise yun. So nag-scramble bigla yung Alaska. Who did, who did Alaska get at eight? I think si oh, Alan Sasan yata yeah. yung kinuha nila. Oh, yeah. Alan Sasan of Cebu. Yeah. yeah. He was also my teammate in the national team. He was a, he was a good uh, two-guard shooter yan. Yes, yes. Correct. correct. Okay. So, yun na nga. So, the, what's the next? Let's check down then the next photo, please, Carla. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah na. Swift na nga. So, they did draft you. Um, very very rare photo of Yang Gao with hair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Nobody remembers. 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 Nobody remembers.
Hindi, <laughs> pero naalala ko yun. Meron dyan, meron dyan, meron dyan. May photo dyan. Hindi, okay. <laughs> <laughs> pero naalala ko, may isang coverage dati sa PBA. I was, I was doing the radio coverage. May pinakita si Eric Reyes sa big screen. I, I, don't, I don't know if we were in Coneta at the time. So Tony Harris and Eric Reyes in one game combined for 109 points. <laughs> Yeah. 105. 109 kasi 4 points. 109 combined Eric Reyes and Tony Harris combined for 109. Naka 4 points si Eric. Tawa ako ng tawa talaga noon. It's crazy Richard De Rosario for you. I mean, he was the one who captioned that. Sira talaga si Coach Richard do. Grabe. Pero ano, alam mo? Um grabe naman kasi yung ginawa niyang 105 noon eh. Because he did it against nothing no less than ang Ginebra. Pinagtititira siya. In Iloilo, in Iloilo. Oo, oh, yung yung blue na nasa picture na 'yan. Naka-white jersey kami niyan. When we were playing in that game, puting-puti 'yun. After that game, halos <laughs> nalinis yung buong sahig sa Iloilo gym eh. Kasi nga sad-sad nang sad-sad din si Tony Harris. <laughs> yeah, sobrang galing niya. Pero pero how was he as a, as a teammate and as a person, Eric? And we've heard some crazy stories about him as well. Not as crazy as Billy Ray Bates stories, but what were what are your Tony Harris recollections? Um, Tony, Tony was actually a good teammate. Um, he he was really when he was talking to me a lot because, sure, I know I'm the off ball. Eh. Uh, teams are already starting double. They didn't double nila si Tony Harris a lot, so I had to be very important on making the shot. Magagalit yan siya pag hindi mo siya shoot yung ball. Eh. So when I was in practice, he would always criticize me for, number one, uh, yung tira ko kasi noon, and I don't know why, it wasn't basic, it was side spin eh. Dapat back spin. Pero for some reason, I've been doing that side spin shot in, since high school and my ball was going in, I don't know why. Maybe because maganda yung lobo ng tira ko, ito, the loop. But he was, ve- he was really, on, in my case, always getting into my nerves every single day. Parating, dam- maingay eh, madata. Madada, tapos sabay, um, pag di mo sinut yung bola, dami reklamo. Um, tapos minsan, you know, I was guarding him in practice, so nahilo ako kakadepensa kasi ang bilis, tapos ang lakas eh. Um, you know, he corrected my shot, he improved it a bit para magkaroon ng backspin. And then, in every drill in practice, gusto niya, dumadunk ako. Uh, kasi nung college naman, nakakadunk na ako eh. Pero dito, when I went with Swift, after that 92 season, no na champion with Tony Harris I really got stronger dunking that ball a lot because in practice alone Tony always emphasizes when you go for a drill go for go for the dunk always so parating in, in short go hard kahit sa drills lang and ganyan siya um even nag aaway sila ni Dong Distrito no nagsusuntukan sa practice pero hindi niya inaaway si Dong um Si Dong ay nag-away sa kanya. Tapos, <laughs> away pa yun si Tony Harris kay Benny Cheng sa practice. So, 10 to 12 ang pure foods. Eh si Tony, umaakit na ng maaga kasi gusto mag-shooting. I think in the previous game, na, 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 nagkaroon niya ata ng, binusan niya ata ng tubig ng sister ni Benny Cheng, si Tony Harris uh, while watching in the game. So, medyo nagkaroon na ng konting uh, bad blood in that in that in 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 uh, ult, no that was i think in ano pa uh, kuneta tapos pagdating sa practice nagrambunan si Tony tsaka si Benny Cheng and nagdo sa baba kami ng race yung nagbi-billiards kami nagaantay ng oras namin bigla nakita ko si Dong Distrito umakyat sa practice may dalang tako Papa. Papa, tumutok ka si Dong Distrito. Eh, alam mo naman si Dong eh pag lalo na pag teammate ka niyan, even no during the Barangay Ginebra days, talaga hindi kay iwan yan. Sobrang uh, yeah, si Dong was also another he he was really a nice nice teammate. I'm glad he was my teammate and not his <laughs> opponent. So, yeah, si Dong, si Tony, tapos ano pa ba si Tony? Basta ano, yun, labas na labas yun eh. Kaya yung nangyari kay Quincy Miller nung isang gabi, binangko dahil uh, puyat, lumabas. Uh, yeah, ito ulit. <laughs> ito ulit, basta, basta siguro, basta kung as long as you can deliver in the game, you play. But if you can deliver, you go home. <laughs> ganun yung ano, ganun yung ano dyan kay Tony. Pero syempre, kalakasan niya and uh, you know, Coach Yeng, miski sila ni Coach Yeng, nag-aaway sila in, in, the, in the finals so against 7-up. 
um, nag-aaway sila in the dugout kasi sama na ta- naman talaga nung laro ni, ni ni Tony tapos nag-aaway sila ni Coach Eng sa dugout pero yun mag- being a good coach like Coach Eng na-convert na- 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 gumanda yung laro in the second half gum- nanalo rin kami in that game so yan maraming ano si Tony talagang uh, uh, may toyo <laughs> may toyo <laughs> pero pero if yun nga kasi nga rule nun um, if you can get the job done uh, kahit huwag ka mag-practice I think even then the Billary Bates era ganun eh di ba so eh, I mean it's to each his own yan kanya-kanya yan of course yung uh, kay, kay Quincy is different yung kay, kay Tony was different Coach Yang but but yun nga maganda kasi nung 92 he was just literally scoring almost 60 points in a game yeah, yeah. like Grabe. Um, okay. Really one of a kind. We haven't seen any anything like that. Yeah. Pero, yeah. yun na nga, pagbalik, you know naman in the PBA, you might be able to do it one conference, but when you go, when you come back, you're dead. <laughs> and in 93, hindi na, hindi na siya maka-60. Kasi nga, kahit nakaka-40 pa rin siya, 50, eh, ang gagaling naman ng mga coaches natin sa mga players back then, they, they really dissect the players and really made it hard for Tony already because of the double team. Right, right. Kaya nakakabili rin currently si Justin Brownlee who keeps coming mm. back and keeps doing the same thing. You know, every, yeah. uh-huh. every conference he comes back. Kaya, kaya bilib tayo sa kanya. No? Okay, okay, question question. Ko kay, uh, sorry, sorry, Charlie. I just wanted to ask yeah, no, you, no, Eric, why, is, why, why number 10? I, I don't think that's been asked yet. So, why number 10 ever since? Ever since number 10 because of Mon Fernandez. When Mon Fernandez was number 10 in Toyota, I've always chosen that number because I've always idolized Mon for his all-around skills. Yeah, um, that's the straight answer. Right? Yeah, no, that, okay. that, that, that actually makes sense. No. That's right, that's right. But you mentioned kanina, Rick, that na, na, nataga ka ni Jawo uh, in one of those parang practice. <laughs> parang, this is before your PBA pa yata, di ba? Um, yes. Sa PBA, sino unang bumanat sa'yo? Sino <laughs> nag-welcome sa'yo? Sino nag-welcome sa'yo? Who's the first guy who said, come here, rookie, tapos binangga ka ng todo or binigyan ka ng siko, whatever? Um, you know, I, I, honestly, I couldn't really remember. But of course, tama-tama, si Onchi de la Cruz nanonood ngayon. <laughs> Nung nakatapat ko si Onchi, medyo, <laughs> medyo mangi, matras na ako ng konti eh. Medyo takot na rin ako kay Kuya Onchi. Wala of course, like Abi King, wala kang Abi King encounter. Hindi ka pa binigyan ni Abi King kasi nagwe-wait no, no, yun. No, eh. hindi ako yung binigyan ni Abi King, binigyan niya si Ronnie Tompkins. Eh. <laughs> 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 um, oh, si Abi. Um, yung rookie year ko parang I don't really par- honestly parang wala. Parang wala okay. kasi at that time malaking bagay na nandiyan si ano eh, si Rudy Distrito, teammate ko. Okay. Oh. Tapos Yenggyao coach ko eh, hindi ka pwedeng duduwag-duwag di coaching. Kailangan pumapalag ka. So, ako yung oh. nag-hard foul. Hina-hard foul ko sila, Winston Crichton. Um, oh. <laughs> kasi ako dumipensa kay Winston Crichton when, when he played for Alaska. So, first play of the game, tinaga ako si Winston Crichton. Tinawanan lang ako eh. <laughs> Laks oh, kasi. Laki 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 De, pero, Grabe, but, 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 but you mentioned it already, no? Suddenly, here you are. As you mentioned kanina, you were scoring in your 20s, uh, PABL, UAAP. You entered the PBA and suddenly you're the guy tasked to guard all these imports, all the great big men of the other team. And you're you're pretty much not taking any shots anymore, Eric. How was that transition for you? Did, did Were you sometimes itching to take some shots? And, you know, or, or parang, ba- bakit mo na-adapt yung, yung position na yan all of a sudden in the PBA? The coaches impose it upon you or something? Was it something you just did by yourself? Um, what happened was in my, in the exhibition games prior to the 92 season, I I was playing my A&W style of play, taking shots from the outside um, and driving to the basket, posting up. And nung time na yun, we played this guy, this import, Clinton Smith yata siya for Pure Foods. Um, yun yung 90, 92 import nila nun eh. Yeah. And walang makapigil eh. Walang makapigil sa kanya. So, Coach Sheng told me, sige. So, inasign ako, sinubukan ako ni Coach Sheng to guard him. So, I was really, I shot him down. So, dun pa lang, in that, in that uh, exhibition game, medyo nahirapan na si Clinton Smith. 
And that's how my defensive skills were really maximized by Coach Sheng at that time. Um, number two, yung team kasi namin, if you look at that roster, lalo na nung dumating si Verhel, eh paano ka pa magiging <laughs> maghahanap ng, ng bola nun? You have one of the best, the MVP, Verhel Meneses, who's a great one-on-one -on -one player who can definitely score. You have a Nelson De Bula Saitono, who is also a great scorer. <laughs> diba? So pag pinagsama-sama mo na yan, ala nga naman, eh, dapat talaga limang bola yung ibigay sa amin nun kasi hindi <laughs> pwede. So someone has to do the dirty job. But even if you look at the NBA landscape, pag pinagsama-sama mo yung mga superstars in one team, it's not really... It's not really working. I mean, someone has to do the dirty job. Someone has to get the rebound. Someone has to play defense. And that, I think, is more important than uh, having to ask for the ball all the time. And then, third point, bakit ako naging ganun? I wasn't really shooting the way I was scored. Oh. Ako. No. Ayan Ayan yes, again. Oh, I wasn't really shooting. I wasn't really scoring the way I was scoring in the PBL UAAP days. Kasi the ball, I have less touches na eh. Kasi mas, so my shooting percentage went down and Coach Yang told me na improve ko naman yung shooting skills, yung, yung, yung percentages ko. Diba? Dapat man lang, 50%. Um, but yun na nga, I'm not blaming Coach Yang for this, but I'm blaming myself. Because what Coach Yang said was to improve your shooting percentage and not to shoot the ball. Ang ginawa ko, sobrang naging conscious, sobrang bait ko kasi, masyado kong natakot at maging masunurin kay Coach Yang, na sinunod ko talaga yung gusto ni Coach Yang. Kung 50% ang shooting percentage, dapat 50% para mas maganda yung game mo. So tumaas nga yung shooting percentage ko kasi I was playing off ball more, cutting to the basket, getting putbacks, so yung shots ko, not anymore much from the outside, paminsan-minsan na lang yun. But I, was, I became very good at cutting and scoring and finishing off the cut. Um, not anymore the ANW days na ako yung binibigyan ng bola para tumira. So mali ko yun kasi nga, uh, when I talk to some of the current PBA players or UAP players now who are struggling with their game but are great offensive players, I tell them, you have to shoot your way out of a slump. And that's what happened to me in the early years of my PBA career kasi yung nagagawa ko sa UAH at sa PBL, hindi ko nagawa kagad in the early part. Diba? Because yun na nga, mali nga yung, yun yung isa sa parang regret ko na ah, dapat kung sinabing to shoot above 50%, dapat tumira ka lang. Diba? So, so kahit nakaka-30-40% field goal shooting percentage ka, of course masama yun. Hindi sinabi sa akin ni Yeng na huwag tumira. Sinasabi sa akin, tumira ka, ba't kailangan 50%? So, oh. mali, mali yung ginawa ko. So, that's one of my regrets why hindi ko na nahabol ulit yung scoring ko na ginagawa ko nung college. Okay. Tignan ko lang itong picture. Hindi katabi ni Bognot. Hindi ko yata na. Eh, Roy. Ah, yes, Bognot. First West. Yeah, ni Bognot. Ah, Solis. Ah, Choy. Si Choy. Oh, wait. Wait. Bognot. Si Choy ba yun? Si Bognot katabi ni Coach Yang. Eh. Choy Strada. Choy Strada. Choy Strada oh, ba yun? Yeah. Choy Strada, yes. Okay. Sa likod ni Eric, si Choy Estrada. Hmm. Then Alam si Tero yung isa, di ba? Si Bilyamin. Naalala ko lang dyan talaga, ano eh. Um, yun, yung, yun yung gusto ko sabihin sa mga kabataan ngayon ng basketball player. Uh, Mag-ingat po kayo sa mga pinagagagawa nyo sa buhok nyo kasi balang <laughs> araw sisimilin kayo. <laughs> papakalbo, papakalbo. Kasalanan niya, Rudy Distrito yun eh. Pasok na kami sa 5 out of 7 incentive. Oh. Pinuloy pa niya, no bearing na yung game. So natalo kami sa San Miguel, eh di pakalbo kami lahat. Siyempre, nakakahiya naman. Nag, nag, nag ano kami, nag uh, pangako kami sa mga sa publiko eh. Uh, buti walang ano, buti walang nag-resist, ano? walang nagsabi na ayaw ako magpakalbo. Uh, Parang team, team unity. Uh, no choice. Si, sino umawak sino kila Boy Beat? Sino yung nasa likod? Si Dong. Si Dong ba yan? Si Dong ba yan? Si Dong ba yan? Pero after nito, hindi na nagpatubo ng buhok si Coach Yeng, ano? Tinuloy-tuloy na niya. Diba? Tinuloy-tuloy na niya. Nagustuhan na niya. Oh. <laughs> na niya. <laughs> si Mr. Elmer Yang, since executive siya ng RFM, hindi siya pinayagan magpakalbo. O, oh, nagpa-buzzcut lang. Buzzcut lang siya, diba? Parang military. Buzzcut tapos na pa itim ng buhok. Yeah. <laughs> Grabe yan. Nung nagparade kami sa ano, nung nung for the warm-ups, 
Nakahat, nakasombrero pa kami niyan eh, baseball cap. Tapos sabay nung pagtakbo namin sa gitna, pagtanggal namin, nagsigawan yung mga tao. <laughs> Grabe yan. That, that, that preceded of course the yellow hair of Mobiline. Nalala niyo yung Mobiline, lahat naman sila <laughs> nagdilaw. Like I said, I'm warning all these kids right now who keep on doing things to their hair. Good luck. <laughs> Magtatampo rin. No? <laughs> yeah, pero yun na nga, show of unity. It was a strong team though, Eric. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you played, you played team. for you played for RFM, you played for uh, Mobiline uh, thereafter, then Alaska at the end of your career. Um, the most success was during this time, no? uh, championship wise, diba? yes. Pinanalo, you almost won a grand slam and all of that. Were, were these the best years of your PBA career? I would say so, I would say so, Charlie, because, um, you know, like I said, when I look back at what basketball has done for me. Um, there are many things that I never expected to happen. Number one, simula natin nung kabataan, I never expected that uh, mapupunta ako sa Ateneo. I never expected that. Uh, number two, I never expected that I would be able to still play for Coach Jolie pa. Because akala ko, nung nasa Ateneo na ako, I would never have a chance to really play for him because he was the first one to really uh, who had interest in me since my fourth year high school days. And then, of course, I never expected to end up in SWIFT. Um, yung SWIFT days ko, dapat Alaska ko. I was supposed to play for Coach Tim. And uh, yan, uh, because of SWIFT, dyan ko rin nakilala yung asawa ko, of course. If not, if I, can you imagine uh, what basketball has done for me? If I did not go to SWIFT and I ended up in Alaska, I would have never met my wife siguro back then. Right, right. So a lot of these things, parang there were so many moments where um, that were unexpected, but things just like fell into place. Of course, yeah. you know, the rest is history. You know, um, from Swift, I moved on to other other teams rin naman, di ba? Kasi nga, it's not really because I played for Swift, di ba? That people were saying, kaya mo naman naging asawa because nakasama mo, nakilala mo sa Swift and you wanted to parang protect your interests so that you have a stable career in the PBA or in the in, in the ball club. Um, that's something that, uh, you know, you know, medyo parang something that when I look back, those were some of the write-ups that I did. Honestly, I didn't really like and I really didn't agree with. Um, kasi akala nila, kaya ako rin, you know, that's why I dated my, and, and married my wife. It was just because parang may PBA team ako. <coughs> Hindi yun eh. I moved on to other teams naman eh. If I moved on to other teams and yeah, the rest is history after that. Oh, and then you're still going strong. And in fact, you have a baby on the way, my friend. <laughs> Our friend Eric Reyes is going to be a father once more Ay, very soon. Yes. What, what what the can at do? the right young yun. age of 50 something. So, what <laughs> Nasugbo can do. Yun lang yun. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to the next photo, please, Carl. I like this photo. Talaga. This is classic, but let's, yeah. let's look at the next photo. Yeah, this is the Mobiline photo um so you did transfer to the pepsi slash mobiline franchise in 96 played with them for a few years you got to hang with some veterans ito, ito yung tanong lang. you're a defender in the pba who were the toughest guys to guard imports and locals sino pinaka mahirap yung parang feeling mo oh my god sakit na katawa ko mama yung gabi um import uh of course i'm thankful buti na lang tony harris was not my was my teammate <laughs> that's one uh well if you look at all the assignments that I had, a lot of the imports back then, um, Jervis Cole of Ginebra, I, I remember him. Medyo, when I played him in, back in 92, medyo sinisinda ko ni Jervis at that time. Um, oh. Sino pa ba? Of course, Winston Kreit. Um, and then a lot of the imports really have been tough. Uh, Sean Chambers, you know, you know the hard part about Sean Chambers Nababasa ko na yung laro niya eh. Bobby Parks, you know, uh, those are the guys na kahit basang-basa mo na yung laro nila, alam mo na kung anong gagawin nila sa kanan, anong gagawin nila sa kaliwa. And even if you are nag-miss yung shot, they will beat, they will outwork you eh. And to me, the skilled imports are easy to defend because you can just send a double team and they'll give up the ball. They have no choice but to give up the ball. But the hardest part with with uh, Sean and even sila Bobby Parks. Kasi kahit ma-stop ma mo sila, ma-depensahan mo sila, they will attack you in different facets of the game. They'll get offensive rebounds. 
uh, they'll get um, they'll fight for every loose ball. Tapos parang hindi ka titigilan, they will never stop. So that's to me that that's what makes them really great players. That's why Justin Brownlee, kahit alam na alam na natin na Rudy Justin Brownlee, iba iba pa rin, nakakabumebenta to may 30 kung ma-40 pa nga in, in some of the Ito games. Ito yung double pa ka mo ngayon. Di ba? <laughs> you know, one assist the other night, yeah. Like span by laro, no? Iba yung at yung at the attitude to me is very important. Eh. Um, of course, yung mga Hinebra imports, I remember Danny Jones, he was 6 foot 5, that was like 250 pounds. I had the hard time kasi ang bigat. Uh, Devin Davis of Alaska was also tough. Again, those were the guys who were hard workers. Eh. Uh, hindi sila basta pa sa modeling pigilin. No? Um, on the local side, of course, sabihin ko na sa inyo lahat, uh, I have so much respect for Don Ramon kasi nung binipensaan ko siya, naka tikim makagat ako ng tatlong siko eh. <laughs> Bilis to siko ni Papa Mon, hindi pa halata. Sa, sa, sa free throw lang, binigat ka agad ako ni Mon Fernandez. Sabay-sabay simple, sa hinampas pa ako sa mukha. Pero those were the fun days. Uh, ito, uh, Samboy Lim, I had the chance to guard Samboy. I had some good games that I was able to stop him. Pero galing talaga si Sam. Danny Siegel was also another one towards the latter part. And of course, Alvin Patrimonio. Yeah. Uh, I was Alvin, waiting for that. Yeah. I was waiting for yeah. that. Alvin was always a guy who, yes, I did, had some success on guarding Alvin. But, you know, we all have to remember there's a double team. And, uh, yeah, the bablak mo nga si Alvin, but that's all part of the game. But then, you know, how can you, you know, not... So there were some games he really ate me up alive. And that, yung, that's some... Yung, yung, itadagdag ko lang si Kento ni, ni Eric. Ano, this was a time... Eric Reyes played in the time when the PBA still had illegal defense. So, medyo iba pa yung dimension sa pagbabantay. Nung time, hindi ka pa pwede sumuna nung time na yun eh. Yeah, the double team was yes. harder to come, di ba? Yeah. Yes. So, so your skills individually would have to be better. You have to be able to do lateral movements quicker. Kailangan on the low post. Eh, isa pa, Daniel Defonso. I was also assigned to Daniel Defonso to guard him, although I was uh, playing the three position already. Um, pero ang hirap ni da- lakas ni Dani ay. Mm-hmm. Lakas ni Dani ay. So a lot of those guys, uh, talagang iba- ibang klase talaga maglaro eh. And I have so much high regard. Lalong lalo na kay Cap, Alvin yeah. Patrimonio. That's so many great battles. Yeah. Uh, Doon ko unang na-experience na ma-eject from the game because of... Uh, <laughs> Kasi, kasi Alvin hit me on, binigyan ako ni Cap kasi I gave him a hard foul. Binanatang ko rin si Cap. Out kami pareho in the game. Hindi um, siya nakoblish ka. Panalo kayo. Panalo kayo. Hindi siya nakoblish ka. Talo kami. Talo, talo pa. Talo, talo pa. kami. Yeah. Nung nawala si Cap nun, uh, that was si Coney Island against Swift yun eh. Um, Nag-away kami ni Cap in the game. That was the first time I got really fine because of fighting in my entire mm-hmm. basketball career. And then... Uh, Grabe. Unimaginable, ha? Eric yeah. Umawi pa rin ng Coney Island in the second half. Ejected na kami dalawa ni Alvin. Yeah, grabe naman kasi yung lineup din nila. Magagaling din yung... Yeah. Yeah. Guys, napansin ko lang, no? I guess I need to say this. We're all, sports, uh, we're all sports casters here. All four of us. There's at least six six uh, PBA sports casters in this, yeah, in this photo. In this photo. Uh, right. Diba? Diba? Richard, diba? yeah. Yeah. Richard, Joey, si Norman Black, si uh, Coach Franz Pumaren, si Coach Leon oh, yeah. Saak. Diba? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Of course, Eric mm-hmm. Reyes is there as well. So, Pero, uh, very uh, clear ang nagdala sa team na to si Richard. Ano? Yeah, meron pa kasi yes. siya, no? TJ Manotok yan, di ba? Nagdala sa akin. Yes, TJ was also very oh. active. Uh, Coach oh. Tommy Manotok was very oh, much active. Yeah. So, so <laughs> yes, I agree with uh, you know with you guys. Richard Del Rosario was really a, a factor in, in this team. <laughs> for, uh, but tayo natatawa ba? A factor for what? A factor for what? <laughs> issuing the most number of fouls and giving the... Uh. A lot of flagrant fouls back then. Kasi naalala ko, Richard Del Rosario was a factor after the game eh. <laughs> Grabe yan. Mas lalo pag Araneta yung game, he's really a factor. Pero you look at it, in all seriousness though, ah, it, itong frontline rotation nyo was something else. So, Andy Siegel, isang Tonichi sa liko. Sa yeah, Tonichi, Yoyoy. Oh. Yoyoy. Yoyoy. Hindi ko din si Alvin Teng sa oh. mobile line eh. Dito oh, si Griones ba tuloy siya? 
Yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 Ang bigat, ha? Ang bigat ng... Even the guards are a good bunch, man. Solis, Kapaso, Karyaso. Oo, Patrick Pratt. Pwede yung trivia question to, eh. Anong team yung naging magkakampi si Glenn Kapaso, Franz Pumarin, and Jeffrey Karyaso? Di ba? And oh, Yoyoy uh, Villamin, di ba? May hirapan ng tao makuha yun. Eh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totoo. Jeff was... But then, but then ano, Rick... After your after your Mobiline stint for a few years, you transferred to Alaska. You finally got to play for the team which you thought was originally going to draft you. You get to play for Coach Tim for the last last part of your career, uh, and you and you end it there. No, how, how was that experience, and and when did you decide that it's time to to go? Um, when I when I went to uh, Coach Tim, I learned so much about the triangle offense. That's why. Laking bagay din eh. Like when I try to read uh, Hinebra or even with BMEG, yung mga previous teams ni Coach Tim uh, for the sports coverage, alam na alam ko na yung I was very much familiar with the system. So yun, uh, that's something that I learned a lot. Um, but you know, Charlie, it's, it's different. Eh. It's different already back then. Kasi nga, uh, I was able to experience Coach Yang and Coach Yang is a type of coach who would always give you different uh, combinations on the floor, different uh, players. If you are an up-and-coming player na hindi ka nagagamit masyado, tapos sabay in yung skills mo medyo alanganin, coaching is very good at making players, role players become good players. So that, that's something that I learned. And then kay coach team, mas nahirapan ako to get minutes kasi at that time, nawala na rin yung offense ko eh. Diba? I was more defined as Eric Reyes. It becomes a defensive player, role player. Uh, stop this guy, stop that guy. That type of role is what I was doing a lot with coach uh, throughout my PBA career. And yun nga yung mahirap. Kasi nung nakikoach yeng ako, pag bangko ka in one game dahil masama laro mo, makakalaro ka pa ulit in the next few games. With coach team system, Coach team would always have a solid six to seven guys that he would always live and die with. Very similar to how Coach Phil Jackson handles his teams back then. Ganun na ganun yung sistema ni Coach team. Um, so at that time, since hindi ako part of that six, seven, medyo less playing minutes na. So parang pasundot-sundot ka na lang. Kumbaga, you're just like... In, in in NFL football, you're just like a special ops, special ops kay gagamitin teams, special teams, certain, so. certain situations. So yun nga yun nga yung difference. Siguro if I went to coach team in the early part of my career correct, correct. versus pumunta ako kay coach Sheng, baka I would have had the chance to become part of that five to seven guy rotation. So if you ask me, san mas okay? Uh, and now looking back. Uh, of course, when it comes to development of the player, then mas maganda kay Coach Yen. Kasi kahit, let's say, so-so player ka lang, mabibigyan ka ng chance para mabuild yung confidence mo. Because that's the difference between college and UAP and PBA. In the PBA, you're already together with a lot of great players, a lot of legendary future Hall of Famers. Di ba? In college, syempre, lahat kayo puro up and coming. So halos pare-pareho lang yung level. Dito hindi na. Dito pa talagang lahat. Cream of the crop kasama mo na dyan. So kung, kung napunta ako kay coach team nang hindi na ako ganun ka taas ang kumpiyansa ko sa offense ko, it's going to be a lot different than when I was there starting pa lang. Kasi si coach team, ganun talaga yung sistema niya. And I cannot question... And I get, can't even say Coach Tim is not a good coach. How can you even? How can? I, how will I even have the right to say that? Eh, coach Tim has so many. He's the winningest <laughs> coach in PBA history. One thousand wins. And oh. he has Grand Slams already. Yeah. Diba? So, right, right. And it with Swift, we almost uh, Sankist, We almost went for a moment. na kami mag Grand Slam din, but you know, kinapus ng last conference. But with Tim, right. Coach Tim, pa ulit ulit lang yung ginagawa yun. Eh. Oh. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You, yung kontrata mo expired in 2003, and then you didn't, you didn't pursue any more uh, an extension or, or a change of teams, uh, Rick. Uh, at that time, kasi um, natapos yung 2002, 
natapos yung PBA ng Christmas Day. Because that was, I think, the first Christmas Day game, if I'm not mistaken. No? Uh-huh. And uh, so I left for abroad. Uh, bumila ko ng mga gamit kasi nga preparing for the 2003 con season. And sabi ko, sige, I'll maybe play. I was around 34 to 36 years old back then. So sabi ko, maybe I'll just play a couple of more years and, and, and go na. Uh, retire na and stop playing. Pero yun nga, nangyari, um, nung renewal na ng kontrata ng January 2003, coach team called me. So, yun na nga, uh, I felt bad that they didn't renew me anymore. And, uh, and, and pangalawa, they, didn't, they had to leave race gym already. So, medyo double black eye. Oh, medyo oh. yung simula ng 2000 mm-hmm. for me. Kasi nga, hindi ko na, wala na, hindi na ako na-renew ng kontrata. So, I, I was down. And, you know, honestly, I didn't really want to watch first in the PBA. Medyo, it was, it was a hard pill to swallow because all throughout my life, lalo na nung, 2000 and 2002, my, my two kids were born already at that time. So, syempre, yung hinahanap ko na, stability, trabaho, and, uh, you know, yung, you know, of course, I'm raising my kids, so kailangan may trabaho ko. Yeah. So, so what happened was, um, <coughs> so, it's not really, at, uh, I wouldn't really say, Charlie, I, I said no anymore because when I looked at other teams, Puno na sila lahat eh. I went, I asked San Miguel, Coach Jong, or even Coach Ron Jacobs pa nga yata at that time. And even si Coach Sheng, tinanong ko rin for Red Bull. Pero at that time kasi, there was not enough time anymore for me to be able to transfer to another team and continue my career. So sabi ko nga, dapat nga talaga, I was gonna, kahit, kahit ma-renew lang ako as a practice player, okay na yan. Kasi at least may sweldo ka pa rin eh. Diba? Kasi my two kids were just uh, born at that time. Eh, pero wala na. It, it, I mean, it took a different turn. So I said, you know, those were the tough, toughest part na I would say medyo nalungkot talaga ako. I kind of got depressed because, you know, the game that you love, wala na. You're no longer needed by any team. Yeah. There's a good so, question here, Eric. Ano? Did you ever consider getting into coaching after your playing days? Um, you know what, Sid? Uh, I really considered that a lot. Um Coach Tim, Coach uh, even Coach Ying, and Coach Joe, and even Coach Norman, who's really been a really good friend to me, um, they were co- convincing me. They they see a lot of things in me that, uh, lalo now the way I read uh, read defenses and how I could you know uh, break down players, they see a lot of uh, coaching. Parang they, they see a coaching skill in me that they wanted to harness some more. Uh, Coach Norman offered me a job when we were doing basketball camps in Ateneo. Um, Coach Tim, ganun din. They wanted me to coach. Pero hindi na tuloy-tuloy eh. Kasi nga, at that time, I was already getting into setting up my, my our family business eh. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I re- and, you know, when you mm-hmm. coach, it will really occupy so much time in your life that, you know, halos hindi mo nang makik- makakalaro. My kids were growing up. Um, that's why sabi ko, I think, it, it's, it was parang I didn't want to close my doors. I was so tempted to really grab the opportunity because I also wanted to teach and share. But hindi ganun yung nangyari kasi nga sabi ko, I would have less time with my family because a lot of things were really going to evolve around coaching. It's not only a three-hour job taking care of your team. After that, you'll be scouting, studying, and doing all that. And less time to be able to be with family. Um, right. So sabi ko, uh, tamang-tama, again, it was really unexpected and I never saw myself into dumating yung opportunity na nakita ako ni Fidel Mangonon sa isang event, nag-usap kami. I think at that time, nagbebenta nga yata ako ng putong ubi nun, eh, yung aking Michelle's putong ubi business. We were in this parang changi or bazaar. And it happened to bump into Fidel or Shena Olaso at that time. And they were asking me if I'll be interested into sports casting. So, yung coaching took a back seat because, number one, Norman Black also got me into this basketball camp for Burlington in 2004 and 2003. So, nagsama kami ni Norman yan. Kasi Norman naman, natapos na rin siya doon sa kontrata niya with Santa Lucia, I believe. And then, nag-coach, nag-basketball camp kami tatlo ni, ni Norman at ni Bujing Akot. And that's how all these basketball camps came about. I was able to share and impart my knowledge to all these up-and-coming kids. 
Um, and then, eto na nga yung sports casting dumating. So, hindi ko nga, hindi ko rin inakala na ganyan yung, yung mangyayari because, um, syempre, medyo nalulungkot ako dahil wala na akong trabaho sa PBA. And uh, at least yung offer na maging coach, na impart ko sa mga bata as a, as a trainer in, in Coach Norman's camp. And then now as a sportscaster na lang. And that's how I share a lot of my knowledge about the basket about the game of basketball already to yeah. everybody. Yeah. And you know, well, for everyone's, uh, ano, nakasabay natin din si, si Eric. No? When you entered the sportscasting, you did some radio. So you were with us, kami nila Noel. I remember doing a game with you in the early days uh, on radio with uh, tapos naging courtside reporter ka. And for everyone's information, baka yung iba kasi din nanonood ng PBA lately. Si Eric, Coach Eric is he's now uh, an analyst until now. No? In fact, uh, he'll be on board tomorrow. Uh, I think for the knockout game between Edlex and uh, and Rainer Shine, he'll yeah. be on the cable channel. I'll be on the local channel, the the free TV channel for that. So, madalas nagkaka-partner kami dyan. Um, then, yun, so, naging... Ano, ano connection ng sports casting dyan si dalawang bugoy na kasama mo dyan? <laughs> Wala lang. <laughs> Wala was... lang. Robo ka <laughs> pag saka yung kumakantang malaki. <laughs> oh. That was, an, uh, that was uh, kasi parang nagka-reunion sa RFM nun eh. Nagka-reunion mm-hmm. sa RFM because um, uh, uh, it was a big anniversary event for RFM. So, naimbita yung mga former players. So, I got together with Zaldi, Kenneth Duremdes, uh, Alvin Teng, uh, yun yung dahilan kung bakit kami nags- nagsama dyan. Hindi kami umiinom ha, mabait. Like I said, mabait pa rin ako. Mm. Yung... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, we just go back to the, the picture before this. Um, yeah, this you got yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah just, just to no, congratulate you, of course, for having been inducted into the Ateneo Sports Hall of Fame. That was in 2012. With Olsen, June, and Danny. No? Of course, I'm sure you were happy that these are the guys that you went into the hall with. Um, and then to think, you know, Lasalista ka no high school, and then you became Atenista, <laughs> and then now you're in the Hall of Fame of Ateneo. It's kind of crazy to go from green to blue and still get that same recognition or even more. Um, and so, institution ka dyan, no, sa Ateneo. Uh, and who would have thought? Because you should have gone to UP if, if you were to be followed. But I guess it all worked out. Everything worked out perfectly for you, Eric. You're going to Ateneo. You're going to Swift. Now you have a family nga because of your Swift experience. You got to play under Tim Cohn eventually, which is one of your dreams. So, you know, ano ka? You're blessed, man. Yeah. yeah actually, what? this is actually, um, there's many things uh, that, that were really unexpected from coach, uh, you know, getting to play for Coach Tim to Coach Jolipa to playing for Ateneo, getting the recognition. Uh, there are many things talaga that I'm always and always grateful for. And that's something that I always pray about uh, every single night. Because all these blessings just came about. And uh, like I said, um, who would have thought, you know, this this kid who didn't even play basketball back in grade six who loved playing ping pong uh, ended up to be a, uh, you know, you know be, being given all these blessings uh, all throughout. Eh? I, I never really expected it. And of course... Um, you know, uh, these are the things that I also wanted to thank my father for because um, before I was playing in Ateneo and I played really bad. And my father, uh we were in the house, never really talked to me. He really ignored me. And uh, and I was in the house because he, he was the one uh, who was very instrumental in how my attitude should be when it came to sports. Um but if I play well, uh, back then kasi wala pang, wala pang social media. So, bibili niya lahat ng jaryo, lahat ng write-up. Uh, bibili niya. Tapos yung mga Betamax na kung saan natitape yung mga Ateneo <laughs> games ko na I really played well. Betamax. Every single day. Every single day he would watch that at 5 a.m. And those were the things that, you know, looking back, uh, that, that really was... Uh, Something that uh, unforgettable for me, uh, especially the memory of my father. And uh, looking at this Ateneo picture, you know, brought back a lot of memories on how my dad really helped me a lot. Inaway pa nga ng daddy ko nun si Coach Chris Kalilan sa MMBL. Oh, so, kasi, ito, and share ko na rin. Kasi maganda kasi para ma- ala- mala- maraming mga, ito yung mga trivial eh. Mm-hmm. Si, kasi nung time na yun, dalaro kami dapat sa Davao. Eh, my dad 
medyo natakot kasi nung time niya lalaro kami sa Mindanao with Ateneo. So sabi ng dad ko, no, no hindi ka pwede, hindi ka pwede lumabas. Uh, huwag ka nang sumama dyan. Uh, I still have control over you. Parang ganun. So hindi ako sumama. And then we had the game against UP for in that MMBL game. Hindi ko ginamit ni ano ni coach. ni coach Chris kasi nga coach Chris uh, was so upset that I did make the team. Nagkapilay-pilay na yung mga ibang teammates ko doon dahil kulang nga kami. And uh, yun nga, natalo kami against UP in that MMBL game. So my dad was so upset kasi ba't hindi daw ako pinasok. So after the game, nilapitan ni dad, daddy si Coach Chris and was complaining about why I wasn't really using that game. So ahaway sila ni Coach Chris, argue sila ni Coach Chris doon sa Loyola <laughs> then But then siyempre... <laughs> Kaya pwede, medyo nahiya ako kay Coach Chris kasi malaki rin utang, ni, utang na loob ko kay Coach Chris Kalilan. Of course, si Coach Fritz Gaston. All those guys really, really helped me out, especially na Pineo, make me uh, who I am today. Kaya parang those are the reasons why when I look at this picture and given the uh, Hall of Fame award na Pineo, ito yung mga... My dad was really part of this eh. Part of this journey. Kasi the PBA days, hindi na naman ako nakita ni daddy nun kasi passed away in 89. Diba? Hanggang doon na lang sa back-to-back yung nakita niya talaga sa akin saka yung youth team. And that's something that I've been doing even to my kids now. Uh, they love to play. Uh, one is in DLSU, although he's not part of the team and he's going to try it again. The other one is still in, uh, in, in, in high school, early years. So ganun din, pag may mga games sila, Ginagawan ko ng paraan in order for me to watch kasi I, I always oh, look... Nagkita pa tayo, di ba? Sa, no? Yeah, ganun na ganun, Charlie. Yeah. I, I want to go back forward naman to the next picture after this, you know, the sportscasting picture because yung tanong ko naman sa'yo, Eric, what made you love this craft? Um, you know what, Noel? When I, ha- when I did my first courtside report ever... In the PBA, it was really awful. <laughs> you know, if, if I can look back, parang asama talaga nung delivery. And the re- to answer your question, why I love this craft is number one, it's still basketball, and I I right. can still right. say right. that I could impart more my knowledge and experience to all the kids uh, growing up and watching all these great basketball players. Um, and then, that, that's one. Kasi nga, hindi ko nga nagawa yung pagiging coach sa, ano, sa, sa PBA or sa college. Kasi nga, I really put priority on family time. Uh, kasi kung na-coach ako, I'll have less time for them. Eh. Hindi ko mapapanood yung mga laro dahil yung mga anak ng mga coaches nga ngayon, ah, pag yung may mga games sila, like kay Coach Chito Victolero, yung isang anak niya na mahilig din mag-basketball yun, nakilala ko. Uh, hindi na rin masyado nakakano dahil busy, grabe kasi yung demand ng coaching eh. so at least dito sa sports casting I get to spend more time with my family, I get to watch their games and I also still get to impart my experience as a basketball player and knowledge about the game through sports casting ganun na lang yung naging medium eh. um, well, I, actually, yeah, I actually asked that question because your daughter is, has followed in your footsteps Yes, uh, sabi ko nga, you know, I, I always I always use sports kasi as value formation for all my my kids, my employees at work. And uh, kumbaga, doon na lang ako nagko-coach eh. Uh, do, i, hindi ako talagang literally coach sa basketball, but I, I impart my coaching skills sa, sa trabaho, sa pamilya ko, tapos sa, sa ano, sa sa mga empleyado ko, tapos lalong-lalo na dito sa sportscast. Dito ko na lang na share yung knowledge ko. Um, but again, you know, it's I really cannot close my doors on these opportunities because she'll never know when it will come. Yeah. And malay natin, di talaga natin masasabi, but right now, I just have so much fun, you know, working the games with all of you guys and sharing inputs and stories about what has happened in the past. Kasi a lot of the kids now, won't really, really remember how the PBA came about. Won't really remember who is a Sonny Jaworski and a Mon Fernandez on that level alone. Siyempre now, you know, they were born 
in the Junmar Fajardo era, maybe in the Danny Siegel era, but they will really not know how it really evolved and how all these players came about to become really superstars in the league right now. If not for the Jaworskis and the Fernandes, Philip Cesar, Ato Iko, hindi rin tayo magkakaroon ng mga uh, Jappe Tagilar and all those guys. Because wala tayong pwedeng pagparisan from before. Diba? Sinasabi nila, would Junmar Fajardo be the best player ever uh, compared to Amon Fernandez, etc., etc.? Will never be known naman eh, because hindi naman, magla- hindi naman naglaban yung dalawa at the same prime of their career. Eh. But of Correct. course, hindi magiging Junmar yan. I mean, I won't really become a big man who also wanted to work on my skills if I didn't see Mon Fernandez back then. So right. all of these guys is very instrumental on the development of uh, Junmar Fajardo or the future generation of basketball players for the Philippines. Correct. Kasi kung wala yun, hindi rin dadating sa galing ni Junmar and all the superstars now of the league. Diba? Of course, right now, look, Mark Kagiwa. Wala na si Mark. Diba? We, we won't see him anymore. But now we're still seeing a lot of all these young players become a Mark Kagiwa scoring type of player. Diba? But you cannot, ako kasi I never cannot compare who's the GOAT. Yeah. yeah. I cannot see who's the GOAT because that player would have not been there if not for the previous ones that that uh, came along. Yeah. yeah. Just need, we need to enjoy them all, right? Yeah, yeah. We yeah, just need to really yeah. appreciate uh, the sport and lalong lalo na how the kids are being trained by all these great coaches. Gumagaling talaga yung bata because of them and of course the team trainers and PTs of that team. Right, right, right. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the Eric Reyes story huh? mm-hmm. for episode 156. And ang kwento ng ating mabuting kaibigan at uh, talagang matalik na kaibigan na si Eric Reyes. One of my favorite partners on the coverage, of course. Iba rin mag-work ng game pag magkakaibigan talaga kayo and uh, this is one of my, my good, good friends. So, so it's a privilege for you to, to be here, but we, we have to. That was a time capsule. We finally finished our time capsule. What a, what a journey we had through the time mm. capsule of Eric. But now we have to enter. That was brought to us by Nihao Bread Bakery Tagaytay. We're going to enter now our segments, our regular segments on our show, Rick. Uh, let's enter the Twilight Zone. That means we're about to end. But we, before that, we have to do our segments. The first segment is a segment called Excess or O's, brought to us by Hinelaban Farms. Uh, check out hinelabanstore.com, Lazada, and Shopee for all the products, Adlai and Coffee. Ang pwedeng makuha dyan. Good stuff. It's really good stuff. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you some choices, Rick. Can you just tell me what your choice is? Okay. Quick, rapid fire to, ha? Alvin Patrimonio or Benji Paras? Alvin. Alvin. Dong Distrito or Al Solis? Of course, uh, Al Solis. <laughs> Depende sa situation. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, pag may gulo, siyempre, kay Dong tayo. Oh, head of security tayo. ng MVP. Meneses or Duremdes? Meneses. Meneses. Rasela or Jun Reyes? Wow, that's that's hard. <laughs> of course, depende sa sitwasyon. Kung college ang pinag-uusap, kay Jun ako. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Sige. It, it depends on how you appreciate it. Man. Nelson yeah, Asaitono it, or Yoyo Villamil? Nel, uh, Nelson. Nelson. Terry Saldana or Yoyo Villamil? Yoyo. Yoyo, okay. 1992 Third Conference Championship or 1995 All Filipino Championship? 1995. 1995. All Filipino. Always, no? Always yan, guys. Always yan. Yeah. Derek Pumarin or Yang Yao? Wow. <laughs> wow. Very hard. <laughs> so hard. Uh... I would say Derek. Derek, okay. Mm. Fritz Gaston or Chris Kalilan? Chris Kalilan. Your dad would choose Fritz probably, but see, yeah. okay. okay. <laughs> Chris okay. Kalilan. Oh. Benji Paras, Jerry Codeniera, or Danny Francisco? Danny. Danny, siyempre. Kung buta, since iba yung may pinagsamahan. Yeah. <laughs> Alvin Teng or Manny Victorino? Alvin Teng. Alvin Teng. Jet Nieto or Sep Canlas? Wow. Um, <laughs> I'd go for... Yeah. 
Joseph. Joseph can lose. Joseph, oh, si yeah. Yeah. And then, like I said, it's really depending <laughs> on the situation. <laughs> Zaldi Rialubit or Bonel Balingit? Sa kantahan. <laughs> Sa kantahan, <laughs> kantahan pareho yan. Pwede silang dalawa, tabla yun. <laughs> Oo, oh, tabla yun. <laughs> uh, I'd go for Bonel. Bonel, okay. Boy Beats or Patrick Fran? Ako. Um, kung sa, uh, I'd go for Patrick. Patrick kasi Patrick. is really been dear friend. Okay, Patrick, okay. Jeff Carriaz or Kenneth Duremdes? Jeff. Jeff. Silas Mills or T. McClary? Mm. I'd go for uh, T. McClary. McLaren. Artemis Prime. Codinera, Jerry, or Andy Siegel? I'd go for uh, Jerry. Jerry. Tom, uh, Sean Chambers or uh, Tony Harris? Wow. Uh, parehong respeto eh. Sige. I'd, I'd, go, I'd go for Tony kasi naging teammate ko siya. Okay. <laughs> Ronnie Tompkins or Ronnie Grandison? Tompkins Tompkins Elmer Yanga, Waki Trillo or Tommy Manoto? Elmer Yanga Elmer Yanga, of course and then, and then the last one, please show the photo, Carla Nox Aiko, Carmina, or Rufa? <laughs> <laughs> uh, teka, baka kala ng mga viewers naging dinate ko sila Hindi, ah Hindi, hindi Although may rumors, pero wala. <laughs> Maybe kayo, so ganun din. Si JB, pinili si Rufa, by the way, kasi naka-tandem niya sa isang scene yata. Naka-holding hands siya lang. Hindi ka naman nag-showbiz eh. I, I'd go for Rufa. Rufa also, ha? Mayo ba? Okay, Mayili kayo sa mga statues ka. Saka, mas medyo mas ka-height kasi nila si Rufa. Oh, mas mas eh. nandun eh, sa height. So that's yeah. XSRO's for episode 156 of An Eternity of Basketball. I will turn it over now to Noel for the serious question. Oh. Okay, I will know what you have graciously sent me, Mr. Kuna. Sandali lang. Ayun. Our next segment is brought to us by a serioso uh, chili garlic, a delicious, aromatic, and spice, and crispy chili garlic bits in pure coconut oil made with natural locally sourced ingredients, no preservatives, no artificial colorings, and no salt. Uh, itong chili garlic uh, na serioso manghang at kaya ka ipaglaban Di kaya ng ex mo. Yan. It's a very simple question, Mr. Reyes. And you look at the Christmas packaging there. And, and I, I wish you could taste this right now. Sarap yan. I'll have it for lunch again. He will, he will. Uh, very, very simple question here, Mr. Reyes. Uh, how do you want to be remembered in this uh, field of basketball na pinasukan mo? Uh, I, I would... I would uh, would like to be remembered as a former basketball player who was number one, uh, very intelligent on the court. That's one. Um, and Chempre yung ano, uh, who was always a winner when it comes to winning championships. I would I would want to be remembered that way. Uh, of course, you know you know. Skills wise, siempre everyone wants to be the best basketball player ever. You know, I would always want to be remembered that way. But you know, when I look back and sharing all the experiences that I have and all the all the uh, the, the in different personalities that I've worked with, uh, you know, I'd rather want yung pinaka matalino, and at the same time, uh, that player who had the best attitude to really work to win the championship and do whatever it takes to win a championship. No, very good. And you did win several championships on different levels. So maraming salamat, Eric Reyes. Yan po ang aking seryosong tanong brought to us by a seryoso chili garlic. Sid Ventura next. Okay. Final segment. Huwag mo paiyakin. Huwag mo paiyakin. <laughs> Final <laughs> segment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, same. Hypothetical question. If you uh, had a chance to have dinner with any basketball player, past or present, uh, living or dead, NBA, PBA, whatever, who would it be and why? Basketball player? Mm. Right coach. Living or dead. Mm. Um, maybe Coach Joe. 
Coach Joe as a, as basketball, yung si Coach Joe. In fact, I really, uh, I'm planning to have dinner with Coach Joe one of these days. Eh. Um, and then if it's a basketball player naman, Mon Fernandez pa din ako eh. Mon Fernandez, okay. 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 Sabay mo na silang dalawa, no? Yeah. <laughs> Where did you see them below? We busy na si Don Ramon ngayon kasi dami ng chef na asikaso ngayon with the sports commission but uh iba kasi yung ano ko talaga kay Bon Fernandez eh. This is so much um, that I really learned from. Um and then kay Coach Joe of course ba, ba, you know just to relive all the glory days on and uh at least two ano um but but kasi ugali ko na rin yun eh, especially when I when I uh, see those people like my, you know all my friends in Ateneo when I get together with them, um, lalo na yung sa mga lasal in the high school days, you know it would all, yeah. always be nice to um, to always touch base with all of them because that's ano eh, that's where it all began, and um, of course NBA you know Magic Johnson would still be one of them, but iba pa rin talaga yung mga nakasama mo and you went through the grind and uh, you know you do had so much experience eh, from way back all right the coach joe and don ramon huh? and, uh, yeah. the choices and magic, of uh, and magic and magic and senior enrique <laughs> okay okay kana sid for that one yeah. that's good okay let's good. Uh, enter the last 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 portion hello porky it's called hello porky this is the batian portion rick i was telling you about Now's your time to acknowledge, thank, and just mention, shout out to anyone that, that you'd like to in your long basketball career. Well, um, well, well I'd, I'd like to say, first of all, thank you. You know, pasalamat muna. That's the most important thing because uh, kundi dahil sa kanila, hindi ako, na, hindi naman ako abot dito sa basketball career ko. Uh, wanted to, to say hi to Coach Jolie pa, nor, uh, Coach Chris Kalilan, Fritz Gaston, uh, Oji Narbasa, Chot Reyes, uh, Chito Afable, uh, Ricky Palu, uh, Ernest Escalier, Manny Pangilinan, because they were very instrumental for me sa aking education back then. Uh, my high school coaches, of course, of course, he did pass away already. Norman De La Cruz, Ardi Nahar, Virgil Villavicencio, uh, my family, uh, of course, my late dad, um, mom, my brothers, my sister. Madami kasi ako patid, kaya I just in, in general na lang. And then, um, of course, dito sa my friends from Lasal, my batch 86 group, napakarami niyan. Uh, they did get mad at me and up to now, alaskado pa rin ako because I went to Ateneo. Uh, of course, my, my Ateneo buddies, uh, Albert Mendoza, Danny Francisco, Alex, uh, JV, Joseph, uh, Olsen, June, dami, and dami rin eh. Mel Basso was abroad right now, just so, so recently. And then, yung mga, Joey Guanyo, of course, from, from La Salle, I always see him in the games. Uh, dagdag mo pa dyan sa, ano, um, pagdating naman sa sa ano sa sa workplace all my my staff uh, mga empleyado ko diyan gawin yung trabaho nyo <laughs> kailangan <laughs> manalo tayo ganun din parang basketball um, and then of course my family uh, yun naman talaga eh uh, pinaka important sa akin is really my family uh, Michelle Kayla uh, sana mag- marami ka pang mga sports casting duties that you can work with Noel Zarate that's one <laughs> Uh, she's always yeah. welcome. She's always welcome. <laughs> I wanted to learn from uh, Noel more. Maybe you could be an anchor for volleyball. Ah, after. Ah, after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, of course, si Gab, who's also just like Miguel, mahilig sa basketball. Uh, Francesco, and of course, my upcoming little one, uh, Michelle, and my my mom, my mother-in-law, and all my my in-laws. Of course, uh, they have always been. Uh, loving and caring uh, family to all of, to, to us. Thank you so much to all of you. That's it, man. All right. Yan na yun, ha? Yan na yun, hello, Porky. I hope you can get in one. Malamang you did and someone's gonna text you later. <laughs> na, it happens all the time. 
So I told you to make a list, but obviously. My friend, yeah, so. my friend Albert Mendoza told me, oh, Eric, batin mo naman ako. So here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nakatabi ko yan sa ano, game two ng, uh, game one ng finals ng, ng Ateneo UP last. Yung nanalo yung kaming UP. Nakatabi ko siya si Albert Mendoza. Anyway, sige. Um, well, that's it. That, that's, that's, that's Eric Reyes' story here on episode 156 of An Eternity of Basketball. It's now in the books before we go as usual. We would like to remind everybody that we're part of the Global Ebola Network. And then, um, as part of the Global Ebola Network, syempre, nandyan yung mga behind the scenes, sila Aaron, sila Claudia. Today, it's Carla. Thanks so much, Carla. Great job. Great we job, always Carla. thank PBA Archives and PH Sports Bureau for all the info and the photos that they, they give us. Syempre, we are powered by San Miguel Corporation. Uh, as usual, salamat sa San Miguel. And then, Hinalaban, Sam's House of Chicken, Nihao, and Sirioso Chili Garlic, the best chili garlic in the world. Um, and then, of course, birthday greetings. Mga AOB past guests the past week. Belated, Charlie! Si Charlie rin. Belated, belated. Oh, salamat, chi, salamat. Good day. Olchi, then Hill Cortez, Ed Cordero, and Philip Cesar kahapon. The scholar kahapon. One of the yeah. best. Mga happy birthday sa inyo lahat. So, Di ba si Vince tatapos, nag birthday din? Si Vince Season? Bago yun. 25 oh, oh. yun. Eh. So, nabati okay. na natin last week. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Okay. So, yung, yung day ni JB yun. So, that's it. Uh, episode 156. Rick, maraming salamat ha, for sharing with us uh, you, all, you. all your, your stories. Yeah. Maraming Very maraming nice. pag-usapan. She did well. Yeah, wow. Um, it's really been a pleasure of me, especially when you first invited me to come out. Uh, mar- marami na eh. Mar- you know, all the flashback, everything, all the experiences happened. That's why, you know, it, it is, this is really one of the avenues where I could really express and and uh, show my gratitude to those so many teammates and coaches who have very uh, very much been instrumental in uh, developing me as a basketball player. Anyway, I still see a lot of you guys in the games. Um, super thank you to the three of you. And uh, perhaps maybe we could have another more of these conversations later on over, uh, you know, uh, maybe a round of beers probably. Sure. Yep. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah. By the way, yeah. ang ganda ng background ni Eric. Yeah. Ano man, ha? Mga jerseys niya. Rick, ganun ko ng konti. Pakita mo yung mga jerseys mo. La Sala, Tineo, and Sunkiss. Yeah. Nandiyan, no? Ah, he made yeah. sure nandiyan yung mga yan. Yeah. yeah. And then behind that was even, the even yeah, greater that's even view. Better. That's the ocean <laughs> in yeah. Batangas where he's gonna dive. Dapat dyan, dyan tayo mag-beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Beer. Game, yes. Game. yes. You know what? It's, it's actually my wife, Michelle, <laughs> who had those... Uh, Ano, yung mga jerseys framed like that yeah. para siyempre, ano, ilalagay nga rito namin sa bahay para makita nice, ng nice. mga guests. Nice. Our wives are, are really good to us. Our wives are good to Definitely. us. We didn't, get to, we, we didn't get to talk about your nephew, Rob Reyes, who also played in the PBA. We didn't yeah. get to yes, talk about your brother yes. who played pelota. Mga pelotari, yung mga, mga nag-hayala yung mga yan, mm-hmm. mga kapatid. So, all naglaro din ako yan. Oh, naglaro ka rin ng hayala. Hanggang ngayon, nangahayalay ka pa rin. So, di ba? So, ganun ang, ganun ang, ano, storya ni Eric Reyes. That's all that, if we were in already in overtime, we're getting you to this overtime. We're going mm. too much overtime, guys. We gotta <laughs> fix that. But yeah. anyway, we'll tell you who our next guest is gonna be as soon as we can on our Facebook page. Abangan nyo po yan. People keep asking, who's next? Punta kayo sa Facebook page namin. Nandun. Nalagay namin dun by the time when our poster is done and we'll confirm with our guest. It's going to be there. So that's it for us, 156. Rick, thank you. Have a great day. I know you're going to have it. You're going to get the water, the sun, the sea behind you. So you're going to have a great day. Sid, Noel, ingat. Okay, for Sid and Noel, for Globally Balling, uh, the rest of the crew, Charlie Kuna po, nagpapaala na sa inyo lahat. Kain na tayo. Goodbye, everyone. God bless you all. Yes, sir. Thank you. Rick, ingat. Thank you so much. Salamat. Bye. Salamat, Salamat Eric. Thank you. Thank you.